or he'll have to get the ball out and try to hit, have some accurate throws. He won't have much time, will he? They'll try to get the running game going. It's been a struggle this year as they feed LaShun Daniels, the senior, a physical runner who muscles for seven on the first play. Yeah, and, and again, it's it's tonight against this kind of defense, being able to establish the run is so important, especially on a first down play, because you want this Michigan defense, the safeties, the linebackers, to respect that aspect of the offense so that can open up some opportunities with Bethard trying to throw the ball out in the perimeter. They have to have success on the perimeter, and by running into the middle, that can open some things up. Daniels replaced by Akram Wadley, the speedy tailback in the I formation. They toss it to him, and he tries to get the edge, cuts it back, and does gain first down yardage out near the 39. Those are your impact players. Well, he is definitely, you have to start with, with Watley because of what he can do just like that. You get him on the edge, he can make some big plays, the Chick-fil-A impact players. And then Riley McCarron's done a nice job of kind of stepping up to be the go-to guy with Matt Vandenberg out. He is a guy that makes some quick plays. Jabiro Peppers, of course, has so many different skill set. We'll see him all night tonight. And then Jordan Lewis, arguably the top corner in the country, will have to hold up man-to-man -man coverage. Play action, first down throw from Beathard on a slant. It's complete to Germanic Smith, and the Hawkeyes sharp early. Channing stripling on the tackle, they get nine. Great call here by Greg Davis to go with first and ten. Little play action here. Been running the ball, first couple plays. See the linebackers come up to respect that. Ball gets tipped actually there by McCray. An outstanding focus and concentration there to come up with the catch by Smith. Not just Vandenberg, as you mentioned, but their best tight end, George Kittle, out tonight with a foot injury. And he was a big-time weapon, especially down in the red zone. They'll miss him. Second and a long yard. Wadley picks his way and is able to squirt across the line at midfield. So Iowa, a promising start to this game. One thing that you can go back and look at Iowa over the years is their, their offensive line play and their ability to run the football. And it's really been true again this year. When, when they've been able to run the ball, they've had a better chance to be competitive. In fact, if you look at their five wins, they've done a great job, averaging about 229 yards a game. And their four losses, only 56 yards a game on the ground. And the last two weeks against Wisconsin and Penn State have been dreadful. So this is a big start for them. Play action again. Bethard at first down. Has a man streaking open. Just missed him as Delano Hill came across to lower the boom on Smith. They had a chance there. Oh, they did. Another first and ten play action call. They had the matchup that they want. And I don't know if the inexperience of Smith, he should cut this to his left, towards the boundary, instead of to the safety where, where Hill was waiting for him. I think he surprised Bethard by cutting that back to the inside. That, that play is designed to go to the sideline, towards the boundary. If he goes to the outside, he's all alone, and that's about an 18- to 20-yard pickup. Daniels. And they string him out and knock him for a yard loss. That's Chris Wormley, one of those veterans of the defensive line, with yet another tackle for loss. The Wolverines have done a ton of that this year. Absolutely. Look at that. 30 Here's yards that. against Penn State last week, as you mentioned. Yeah. You, you go all the way back through their entire year. You can see we just talked about these numbers. Only 56 yards, and there's four losses the last two weeks, even Northwestern and North Dakota State. So it's early in this game. And when you take chances on first and 10 and it doesn't work out, you get the second down, and now this is where Michigan thrives, where they can bring pressure and surprise you with different looks. Been a nightmare for opponents all season long this kind of situation against the Wolverines they do show lots of different looks back actually gets good protection escapes and cannot get away from peppers who shoves him aggressively out of bounds on the Michigan sideline crowd wants a flag doesn't get one and it's fourth down hard to run away from number five yeah well usually he, he's known to blitz on third town this time, they use him as a spy. They respect Bethard's ability to create. A lot of man-to-man -man downfield. You see the receivers. You have man-to-man. -man, you have a free safety in the middle. But look at Peppers take him out of the play by spying. Good mix-up there by Don Brown, the defensive coordinator. Instead of bringing him, let him put the eyes on the, on the quarterback. He takes off, which you expect him to do. There's five to chase him down. Gabriel Peppers. And there he is back to receive this punt from Ron Caluzzi, the senior. He practiced a lot of kicking away from him this week. Let's see if he gives him a chance. Now he boots it 
right at Peppers. In fact, it sails over his head and it bounces out of bounds. That's a huge win for the Iowa punt team, and they pin the Wolverines back at the eight-yard line for Michigan's first possession. Maneuvering around the pocket, 6'6", 243. We talked about his confidence right now soaring in this last month or so. Needs to use his feet again, as you mentioned, Chris, to avoid the pressure. And then find those one-on-one -on -one opportunities. He's got a great group of wide receivers and a tight end. Jim Harbaugh notorious for creating matchups on the perimeter. And Spate's got to take advantage of those downfield tonight. Punt pinning Michigan back. Davion Smith is the tailback, and he takes the handoff. And the senior from Warren, Ohio, bangs ahead. We'll see four running backs tonight for the Wolverines. One of our Chick-fil-A impact players, though, is number four. Yeah, absolutely. It's still a big part of Jim Harbaugh's offense. They average 251 yards on the ground. They've got to be able to run and then get the ball to the outside to Darbo. Chess in 86, you also see. I love Jaleel Johnson on the inside. 67, outstanding quickness. And Josie Jewell's been a, a mainstay for the Hawkeyes at that second level, the leader and really does a nice job of getting this defense set up. He's got to play well in the inside between those tackles tonight. It's Chris Evans, the speedy, shifty freshman from Indianapolis. They fake it to him, and Spate completes uh, perhaps the best tight end of the nation, Jake Butt, who gets first down yardage. 6'6", yeah, 250, outstanding spacing on this route. You got the big tight end right in there in the middle. The fullback actually occupies Neiman, the, the outside linebacker, creates the space there. Good, quick decision by Wilton Spate. But again, outstanding route, the design there by Jim Harbaugh to get that oak to open up. But one of two captains, an all-time record holder for Michigan with tight end receiving yards. And now this is Chris Evans breaking free. And you can see the various skills that these four Michigan backs bring to the table here. Watch the right side with Kalis, the right guard, and then the big tight end who's going to walk work his way up through the middle. That's that's a true freshman, Asi Asi. Watch him work his way through. Opens up very nicely. And you'll see, as you said, Chris, four different running backs. They all bring something a little bit different to the table. In Evans' case, it's more of his vision and his quicks. True freshman out of Indianapolis. Spate straight back. Gets good protection. Takes a downfield shot. That's just over the head of Amara Darbo, who's become the top target for Spate this season. Well, they, they're very confident that they can get behind these safeties in coverage. And watch the speed. Watch how they just pull away and walk away from Anthony Gare, the senior out of Plano, Texas. Not quite enough air underneath that to allow Darbo to run underneath it. Homecoming game for Darbo. The only Wolverine from Iowa comes from West Des Moines. He's hunting up tickets this week. A lot of family and friends here. He'd love to have a bust out game. Smith takes the pitch on second. Ten, he is tracked down and dropped for a loss. Anthony Gare, one of those safeties up and run support. Yeah, they brought they brought a middle linebacker that time, Jewel, and they also brought Anthony Gare. You see him shoot through here. And 12 ends up the safety getting to the outside. Watch him work outside. Coming behind that offensive line. You also saw the true freshman who's in for Greg Maben. It's Manny Rub Rugamba? Rugamba. Oh, yeah. yeah, thanks, Ben. <laughs> True freshman in there for Maven. They're counting on him tonight. Does a nice job of getting off his block to also set the edge. So third and 13 for the Wolverines. Spate retreats. Stays alive and flips it back over the middle. A diving attempt. Caught. Jay Chesson makes the catch. First down yardage and yet again... Spate able to escape and make a play. Now, was this a clean catch? What well, gutsy throw there. Darbo's there, but what an effort there. Oh, that ball did hit the surface. Chesson with a heck of an effort. Lays out, but you can see clearly the ball definitely hit the surface. Tom Kissinger is the Big Ten replay official. The ruling on the previous play was a completed catch. That ruling is under further review. I, I bring in Dave Katar, rules expert, but this almost insults your intelligence, Dave. <laughs> to consult with you, this seems pretty clear it's going to get overturned. <laughs> Chris, you're absolutely right. He gets his hands under it, but the ball hits the ground. You can see the ball pop up. Yeah. It moved. 
We, I, I just, just wanted want to, want to hear from you. Dave, we're just, just we're, you. E we're easing you in, buddy. <laughs> thank you. Thank There's you been so some much. controversial calls all over the nation tonight. There certainly So we're has. just we're just easing into this baby tonight. Thanks, guys. We don't think the catch is going to count, but Kirk, we saw again for a big dude, Spate's elusiveness. He just has a way of sliding away from pressure. Sure, he can shed a tackler like like a Roethlisberger, but he is really agile back there. Yeah, and, and Iowa that time only rushed four. And watch how he does at 6'6", 243. Just kind of feels it and doesn't panic. Gets to the outside here. He's not going to run out of bounds. He keeps his eyes downfield. And I couldn't tell there if he wanted to get the ball to Darbo or Chesson. Ball went over Darbo's head, and, and Chesson laid out tremendous effort. And it looks like the ball did hit the ground, though. But, yeah, another example of, of how Spade can... You don't, you don't always have to be a dual threat guy to be able to extend the play. He's a very calm, poised guy. Sometimes Spates have been able to calm down Harbaugh, which is not easy to do. After further review, it was an incomplete pass. As a result, it will be fourth down, 13 yards to go at the 30-yard line. Please adjust the game clock to 8 minutes, 57 seconds. So they missed the home run shot on first down, tackle for loss on second down, and the Hawkeyes defense gets off the field, Kirk, against the Wolverine offense that has been frighteningly good to start games in recent weeks. A punt is a rarity. In fact. Oh, yeah. I mean, they have dominated people 112 to 28 in the first quarter. Just got in, been able to get out of the gate so well. But it's just early in the game. Two teams kind of feeling each other out here in these first two possessions. Kenny Allen does all the place kicking and the punting. He hasn't been very busy as a punter in recent weeks. A little out of practice, and this one comes off the side of his foot to keep it away from King, and it bounces out at the 35-yard line. So the Hawkeyes, second possession coming up, still scoreless here in Iowa City. memory this Veterans Day weekend. Of course, the stadium named for him. After a 35-yard punt, Iowa takes over at the 35. Moved it to midfield in their first possession before installing. Daniels hit in the backfield and spins but gets nothing. Once again, the Wolverines blow it up. Mike McCray got there in a hurry. Yeah, Mike McCray came down in a hurry. He really challenged himself this week to continue to play better football every single week. He and his dad, who actually was a captain at Ohio State, Mike McCray, they kind of grade his play, his performance every single week, and he's been wanting to be able to be more electrifying and make more plays. Boy, he, he didn't wait at all there. He came downhill in a hurry and made a nice play in the backfield. Bethard steps up, delivers in traffic incomplete. Greg Davis, Kirk, the offensive coordinator, said he's going to have to make a lot of, quote, sticky throws tonight. Stick it right in there in tight coverage, it's right? It's because Don Brown, the defensive coordinator from Michigan, is, is doing as good a job as any defensive coordinator this year in the country. Came over from Boston College and just believes in an aggressive scheme. Now he's fortunate. He has a very, very good group of defensive linemen that can get pressure without always blitzing, but he plays a ton of press man coverage. They get in your face and challenge you. And they try to get after that quarterback as best they can, especially here on third down. It's fun to talk to him. Down kind of a salty defensive professor. And third and ten, they try a screen and heavy traffic. Smith grabs it, but they were all over him. Very, very tough to beat. The all-world corner, Jordan Lewis, the All-American. Boy, Jordan Lewis sometimes gets put on the back burner because of all the attention that Jabril Peppers gets. But that time, just read that perfectly. And what do you expect from a team that struggles throwing the football on third down? A lot of times draw, and especially screens. They've been drilled well this week. And the first one that Iowa tries, they sniff out. Opponents are 22 for 118 on third down. This year against the Wolverines. Doesn't happen very often. It's not a good percentage. It's a high snap, running around, and stumbling at the 30-yard line. Oh, my goodness. A special teams disaster by Ron Caluzzi. And Michigan, as if they need it, will get tremendous field position. That was just botched from the start. Yeah, but, but if, if he keeps his feet there, you wonder if he has a chance to, to make this. The entire Michigan, look at this, this 
They're, in, they're gone. They're out of the play. And if he doesn't stumble there, it's a foot race to get to the marker. Wow. That's going to be a tough one to live down in tape study because you're right. Everybody was faked down. The oh, turf monster got him. Yeah, he got the best of him. Now, chances are that's an outside linebacker, Devin Bush, who's got great speed, maybe catches him, but it would have been a foot race to that first down marker. So much focus in the Iowa punting practice this week to avoid kicking the ball to Peppers. And now John O'Neill will review this. Take a look at the where the ball was spotted. See if perhaps uh, he was hit as he went down. Dave, what, what, any idea what they might be looking at in replay here? Well, I, it may be that they wanted to, to see if, if the ball was down. Also, it could have been a targeting call. Remember, the booth can stop the game to look at targeting. So I think we got to take a look at this from their standpoint. It wasn't when he, it was when he, after he was down and started to come up when Bush hit him right there. He definitely gets him with a helmet above, and he's defenseless. Now, is, he's is, he a, is he a defenseless player there, Dan? He is defenseless. He's down to the ground. So the question is, it looks like there's helmet contact. The question is, does replay think they have enough to create a targeting foul? It has to be obvious to them in the booth. Dave, just for the fans at home, can you clarify being a defenseless player and where the contact needs to be versus a guy who's just out running with a football and is not defenseless? Defenseless player cannot be hit above the shoulders with a ham, forearm, helmet, shoulder. A player that's not defenseless, it's a foul if he's hit with the crown of the helmet anywhere. So in this case, it, it, it doesn't have to be about whether the crown of the helmet hit him or not. This is just about contact above the shoulder. He's defenseless because he's on the ground. The only question is, is it obvious to replay that there was forcible contact, a launch, or anything like that that would create that contact. This, of course, is a new rule where the replay booth can buzz down and call the target even though it wasn't called on the field. Bush is a true freshman, a backup linebacker. Probably was surprised that Gluzy fell right, right in front of him here and did not do a good job pulling off the hit. I think Jim Harbaugh is a little frustrated with the officials because he's saying that the play was already over. But the player was already down and starting to starting to come up. He was starting to roll over, and the play was dead. I think that's what Jim Harbaugh's contention is. So he's he's down, and then he comes up, then he gets hit. It's kind of on, I think, with the side of the helmet more than what we consider the crown. After the play, number 10 from Michigan, charged with targeting. He's disqualified from the game. It's a dead ball foul. That foul will be enforced 15 yards from the 30-yard line. It'll be first and 10 at the 46-yard line. Michigan ball. Yeah, because it's a post-possession foul, it'll move the ball back. Michigan will retain possession, but Bush will be out for the remainder of the game. We don't see that very often, Dave. We've seen very few targeting calls, I think, from the booth you know, intervening in this way. We've been frustrated because it, it, at times it looks like they haven't called ones they should have. Extremely rare, but you're right. I think they're, they've changed the rule from egregious to obvious. And remember, it doesn't have to be with a crown on a defenseless player. Anything above the, sh above the shoulder, with the shoulder, hand, forearm, or helmet. So it's, it's still a special team's stumble for Iowa that sets Michigan up in Hawkeye territory just back at the, the 46 instead of the 31. Last thing you want to do with a team that's been this efficient and this dominant is give them a gift like that and see if the Hawkeye defense can rise up. Spade back, flips it short, but makes the catch and will be knocked down after about a five-yard game. By the way, they're going to tell Mr. Bush that he's going to have to leave the field. Devin can't hang around after you've been sent off for targeting. There he is. Samantha? Yeah, Chris, you'll notice safety Miles Taylor not out there, was injured on that last drive. They took him to the locker room, have not brought him out yet since. And you'll remember this week, defensive coordinator told us that he's the most vocal guy they have back there. So we'll see how they do without him. Wow, that's that's bad news. Iowa already shorthanded in the secondary. Greg Maben, their starting corner, is out. And now Taylor being looked at. A second down carry by Evans, and he is swarmed after about a yard and a half gain. It'll be third down and medium for Michigan if you check in for the first time with Cassidy Hubbard. Okay, 
strange things in the air tonight as Bush finally does make his way to the locker room. And the Wolverines face a third and four. Take it to Smith. Spade to a wide open receiver. And that one is caught into the first down yardage by Poji, one of their fullbacks who rarely gets involved as a pass catcher. Yeah, watch the tight end, Bud. Just kind of line up here on the route. It's really well designed here. Does a nice job of kind of setting a screen. The linebacker's trying to work his way out, but he can't get out there because of Bud running his route. Caused a problem there for Bo Bauer. So nice call on third down. Easy read and an easy throw there for Will Spade. Evans tries to get around Desmond King at the edge, does so, and is driven out at the 18-yard line. It's near the first down marker again. You know, they, this Michigan offense it just seems like you get concerned about, obviously, Spate, the receivers. They can run between the tackles. But more and more in recent weeks, Chris Evans, whether he's coming around on, a, on an outside run, we've seen the true freshman, another one, Eddie McDoom, 13, come around on jet sweeps. They really do a nice job of stretching you horizontally and making you have to respect that aspect of their offense. So many moving pieces, so many personnel groups. Spate from the pocket, loops it for the end zone. Jump ball, touchdown! Amara Darbo went up <laughs> over Chris. the quarter and made a ridiculous catch. Chris, that is one hand. Watch, the left hand's not coming into play at all. This is a veteran that goes up, right hand, catches the football, makes the play. Did he get the foot down? We're going to have to take a really close look at Darbo here. Did he get it down? I don't think he no, did. No, he's going to be out of bounds. I was surprised live when they signaled touchdown. Heck of a job to catch the ball. But he wasn't really that close to getting the foot down. No. That ruling is under further review. Dave, I, I throw you the second easy one tonight. I, I didn't see any way that, that Darbo got the foot down here. Well, Chris, like you said, alive. I didn't think it was a touchdown well, either. I, if I could, if, what they're seeing, in my opinion, Dave, is the left foot. Was it dragging? That's what the official on the field must have seen before the right foot came down. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying on the field, right. he thought that left foot was still down check when he made the catch. I absolutely agree with you. That's guys. what I think he saw. It's real close, but I don't think the toe does touch. It's in the air. But I think this official back here, I think that's what, that's what he thought he saw. I think you're absolutely right on that. The question is, do they have enough 100% to say that foot didn't touch? It appears it didn't. In the meantime, you got to give credit to, to Darbo making just a, a terrific catch. Again, in his homecoming game here in Iowa, he was pumped up today to make a play like this. I just don't oh, think. Here's a good look. Progressive pylon cam. Mm. After further review, it was an incomplete pass. As a result, it will be second and 10 from the 18 yard line. Second down. Only made by the pylon cam. Great. Great shot. And second down. Spade showing you both the arm strength and the touch on that throw. That was, that was a perfectly thrown ball. And now Spade going to the left. And we've got Peppers taking the direct snap. Jabril can do it all. He can run. He can hand it off. And he can throw. He's a high school quarterback. Keeper on the zone read. They're ready for it. He spins back and churning is going to be dropped for a loss by Josie Jewell, the middle linebacker, top tackler on this team. So you practice this all week. You've seen it all year. You're a linebacker. What are you going to do when he gets lined up? You're going to have to get to the outside, try to outrun him to the perimeter because you know he's got the football in his hands. There's a flag that came out after the play. After the tackle, things getting a little bit chippy there with Desmond King and Ben Braden. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 14. Yeah. After distance from the goal, from the spot of the foul, wow, that's, that's your automatic leader there. first down. It started, uh, uh, and you know, third down, third and ten coming up. It started with Desmond King and the left tackle, Ben Braden, and then Mason Cole, the center, 52, came in. Watch, it starts with 71 and 14 right there, a little push. Then he felt that swing, so he comes over. Now 52 off to the left comes over. He's the center, and right here, he, 52 gets popped in the face. Mason Cole gets hit, 
And that's what it, where they called it on right there. That's the call that the official made it on. You see him make the call. Sometimes it's not the instigator, it's the one who reacts. In that case, King lost his cool, and that's a big, big penalty. It's going to move the ball to the 10 and give the Wolverines a first and goal. Yeah, and it was about to be third and 10 after all this craziness. And to have your leader in a home game, in a night game, and big stage trying to upset Michigan to have that. That's a mental error for Desmond King. And we felt like I was going to need some breaks from Michigan. They're going to need to play a clean game themselves, and instead they've made a couple mistakes, and the Wolverines are set up here. Kind of a beautiful night to fly here in Iowa City, and good year providing our aerial coverage. Committed to honoring blimp-worthy athletes who demonstrate hard work on and off the field. Good year, official sponsor of the college football playoff. Michigan down here in the red zone, incredibly, Kirk, has had 54 trips. 54 red zone trips, and has scored 39 touchdowns. They are tough to deal with, with all the different personnel groupings, Peppers involvement in the red zone. Yeah. Davion Smith is the back. He's got it. Not much room in the left. And he's hammered after about a yard gain. You know, on the other side, I was actually done a pretty good job in the red zone themselves in keeping teams out of the end zone. They're 18th in the country. 50% of the time teams get down into the red zone. They, they stop them. So Strength on strength right here. Yeah, it is. I'll tell you, it's a great battle if you're at home watching the inside of the pit. Jaleel Johnson, number 67, going up against the interior of that Michigan offensive line. It's a heck of a battle in there. Yeah, he's their biggest dude on that defensive front. Spate straight back, buys time, fires end zone, leaping attempt incomplete. Trying to get it to Chesson. It'll be third and goal. About the true freshman out there on an island there making a play and breaking on the ball and then waving his finger saying not, not yeah, in my area it's a true freshman <laughs> from naperville illinois watch him break on the ball here ball floats just a little bit you can see looks like darbo had the football there but Rugumba does a nice job getting breaking on the ball just in time to knock that football away again as our progressive pylon camp King's trying to coach up Rugumba, the true freshman, kind of mentor him. He is being asked to do a whole lot tonight with Greg Maven out. Third down. Spate has protection. Fires, but it's batted away over the middle by Brandon Snyder, the safety. And then here comes the field goal attempt. Boy, that was a great effort here by Snyder. Chris, he's actually engaged here with Jake Butt. Here he is. He's engaged with Butt, but comes off of him at the last second to knock this ball away. He's right here, then reaches back and knocks that ball away. That's great instincts to come off of his, tar his, his receiver in Butt to be able to knock the ball away. Kenny Allen came out of a slump earlier this year. He missed five out of six, missed three against the Badgers, but he's made six in a row make it seven from 26 yards out. So Michigan converts the punting gap, but only for three. And he says he's a lifer too. He's got it in his blood. By the way, G uh, Jim Harbaugh's first day at Iowa City as a first grader. He was crossing the street after a pickup football game behind his older brother. He got hit by a mail truck. He, was, he had his coat over his head trying to get the... A mail truck runs into him. He breaks his tibia and fibia. I said, you're lucky to be alive. He said, yeah, right. He, he, wow. That was a, his first day here in Iowa City as a first grader. Yeah. Then, then That's he, a heck of a memory. Then on crutches, he, he was racing kids, he said. Did damage. They had to re-break the leg to reset it because he wouldn't he, he could doctor. You couldn't say probably, probably no. not the best guy to have a cast on and say hey no. just give it a little rest here for a week or two or a month so that, that was an inauspicious <laughs> first day in Iowa City for him and on the jet sweep that is just stuffed out Wadley came around the edge and big Chris Wormley said I saw that on tape I was ready for that one yeah and, and nobody blocked him and Chris, that Wormley, helps. Chris Wormley's <laughs> been around enough to be able to figure things out he's a big part of that group up front it seems like we've been calling names like Chris Wormley and Ryan Glasgow and uh, especially Taco Charlton for a long time. they got a great group. They're eight guys rotate and play quite a bit. They keep them fresh for four quarters.
Wadley just hammered in the backfield. It's going to be third down and real long. A lot of big bodies up there. You, you, you see these Wolverines, and a couple of guys are 6'6", six, six, you know, 6'4". Six, they're, they're put together, too. No no excess fat up there. No, that no. I mean, it's, you, you really appreciate that when you see them down there person to person in their uniform. I mean, they, they are lean and quick. I mean, Maurice Hurst, he's battled through some injuries. But he's a guy that, that doesn't play as many, but he might have the best burst of anybody up front. Now here they are again, back in that third and ten. Now they were hoping to be in third and four and third and five, but they've been a lot of third and nine and third and ten. See what Don Brown dials up. They get in Bethard's face. They knock him down, and he can't connect on the far sideline there. Try to get it to Smith. Yet another quarterback hit there. Winovich was one of many Wolverines around the QB. They've got, they've got what, seven or eight guys up at the line of scrimmage. Look, they're, they're showing, okay, who's going to come? Iowa does as good as good a job as they can at actually picking it up. And it's one thing to pick it up. It's another thing to actually block them. But that he had about a second and a half until he had to get rid of the football. Makes it so hard to execute on third down. See if Kaluzzi can get this punt off. He barely got it away. They knock him down. Here comes a flag. It's a very short kick. And Kaluzzi, let's see if they call this the running into the kicker, in which case it would not be a first down or a personal foul. Running into the kicker. Defense number seven. So it's a five-yard penalty, not the automatic first down. Like Hudson got there. It's been an adventurous first quarter for the punter. Huh? Lucy's you know, <laughs> first couple of punts. He's he's had his work cut out for him. He, he feels that pressure. Does as good a job as he can to get it off. Yeah, yeah that's definitely bumped. definitely running in. He went World Cup soccer there on him, <laughs> rolling around on the ground there. Trying some to acting try. in soccer. Oh, just a little bit. You know what? They'll get to kick that's it again though. Thing, it, it was a bad punt, so they'll get a new chance. It's the only thing I can't do with soccer. He, is but he laid down for a he's while. He's doing the soccer <laughs> thing. Look. Bring the stretcher out. He's, right? like, he's trying to talk him into it. It's not a, he, didn't, he got the flag. Now he's going to stay down. It's not running into. I, I swear. It's personal foul. Oh. I'll tell you what, though. You hold your breath because it's been anything but routine for the Iowa punt team. And Peppers, will they get a chance? It's kind of a rugby punt. He kicks it on the run here. Gets hit again. A flag comes out again. So this five-yarder should get him up to first-time territory. Hey, that's going to be a first down. Wow. Back-to-back -back running into the punter. It's a five-yarder, and that's good enough for a first down. Hey, he, he made up for the previous one where he, he hit the turf monster and came up a little bit short. Now, you're going you're gonna to commend his job here. This isn't as much acting. He, he does it after it. He does a good job with the limp coming off after it. I don't know if anybody grazed him, but... Watch him. He gets the flag, and then right after this, he gets up. And yeah, Grant Perry did get him better that time. So how often do you see back-to-back -back running into the punter, first down the hard way, and Iowa back out on the field? We talked about Iowa needing to catch some breaks tonight. They've caught a few here in the first quarter. They have. You're right. Very fortunate to be in that just 3 nothing after Colusi tumbled trying to run for a first down earlier. Wadley spins, gets free, and shows that elusiveness. It's a nice first down gain of seven. I love his jump cut. I, I, boy, Wadley, the last couple years, has been doing this. The, the, the ability to move around, gets around the leading tackler, Gideon, 42. See, he, he's the guy tonight that they've got to be able to find unique ways to get the football in his hands, whether it's obviously running. He's caught the ball quite a bit out of the backfield. You try to create matchups against linebackers. He's the big difference maker that they have on this offense. He's got it again. He was joking. He's finally got his weight up to 190 pounds, Kirk. He's such a, a hard gainer. They've been trying to bulk him up a little bit you know, for these Big Ten battles, and it's been a tough go for him. Well, he, he obviously, along with Daniels, Daniels is more of a thumper, the power back that they bring in, especially in these short yard situations. Mo looks Hurst, like, by the way, still down on the field. Yeah, looks like Hurst, Hurst is down. He looks like he's okay. He's going to come off the field. But you get to these third and shorts, it's not, it's not just the third and longs that are tough. The third and shorts are tough against Michigan, too. And remember, Iowa last week struggled against Penn State. They have been an awful third and down short team this year.
Tomorrow morning on ESPN, NFL Insiders. Get you ready with all the fantasy stuff. Then 11 o'clock Sunday NFL countdown right up to kickoff on Monday Night Football. Good receiver matchup. Your Bengals, A.J. Green and Odell Beckham Jr. and the G-Men. 6 o'clock Monday night countdown game at 8.15. Watch the line of scrimmage here on this third and short. See if Michigan moves the line of scrimmage back. It is a struggle, but Daniels does muscle that, for the first down. That was a great job by Iowa because they've been getting pushed back a lot tonight. This time, they bow up here on third and short. Get a good double team there on the right side. Sean Welsh out of Springboro, Ohio, does a nice job on a double team before he goes up to the linebacker. Now you got to go to play action. You, you, you've been running a lot, running the ball. First and ten is a time you got to take a chance on play action pass. You don't want to wait till third down all the time to throw on this defense. Final minute of the first quarter. Wadley has a burst. Off and running. Stiff arm. And hammers down near the Michigan 30. Iowa finally gets an explosive play. Why, why? Peppers missed the tackle. Yeah, I was going to say, why, watch Peppers to the outside on the right. Watch him move come in try to make the hit right there but Wadley's vision and ability to again have that jump cut right there cuts back behind Jabril Peppers I think surprised Peppers with his suddenness there it's been tough to run for 22 yards in a play against this Michigan defense Iowa marching now after those two running into the puncher penalties kept this drive alive Wadley another cut back in the opposite direction and he earns about three yards and what could be the final play of the first quarter. What, what, what makes this even more impressive is that Michigan for the most part is almost in like a goal line defense. They, they do not fear Iowa's vertical pass game at all. They've got four defensive linemen, three linebackers and both safeties up within about eight yards in the line of scrimmage and Iowa's still able to run the ball here on this drive. Hawkeyes okay, doing an old school style. Michigan though up 3 nothing after the first quarter. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Well, Brains just 51 yards of offense in a brisk first quarter. Iowa on the march here, moved at 46 yards inside the Michigan 30. Second and seven, both Daniels and Wadley now in the game. They hand it to Daniels who picks his way for a short game. Brought down by Rashawn Gary, the freshman, it'll be third down. It's incredible to watch Iowa here in this first quarter, just now starting the second. Already 54 yards rushing in that first quarter. You look at their last two weeks against Wisconsin, 83 for the entire game, and of course last week 30 against Penn State when the game got away from them. So give this offensive line and Kirk Ferentz a lot of credit going up against the best defensive front, best defense they have faced all year, and off to a pretty good start up front physically. See what Greg Davis has called. It's it's been tough. They are really in the bottom 50 in the country at every distance on third down. They got to hurry here. Play clock at two. Beathard just barely got it off, but he will not get away. He's sacked by Taco Charlton, the defensive end, who's got five and a half now this season, fourth down. Yeah, and also Mike McCray actually is the first one to get to him. He just does a good job of getting right by Render, the left guard, with that, with that linebacker blitz. He's going to shoot right through here. Watch how quickly he times that up perfectly. And that forces Bether to step up, and that's where Charlton's able to clean him up. Pepper's there as well, the entire defensive front. Now, again, they get you to third down. You better get the ball out of your hands. They've got two kickers in Iowa. This is the long-distance kicker, Miguel Racinos out of Mason City. He's made one of two this year. He's a walk-on, and this one starts right and stays right. No good. And the Hawkeyes miss an opportunity to tie the game. You just feel like the way the offense has struggled, every battle here takes over up three after the missed field goal. Karen Higdon gets his first carry, and the sophomore from Florida cuts it back. He is one of the four Michigan tailbacks we talked about. A quick guy, cuts well. Incredible to think about what emotions can do for you. We're seeing examples of that today with some of these games and some of these upsets. This Iowa team lost 41 to 14 last week on the road at Penn State. They gave up 359 yards on the ground. 
The game got away from them tonight. They're back home. They've got two backups starting in the secondary and so far playing their hearts out. Play action and wide open is Jake Butt, the big tight end, banging off people. It's a first down at the 40. Ben Neiman eventually stopped him. Butt involved a lot already. Such a, such a big part of this offense. You, you run the ball, you run the ball, and then you make it the other way. Good ball handling there by Spate. And does a nice job. How, how nice is it for a quarterback to roll out and have a tight end that's 6'6", 250 pounds and has a quickness like Jake Butt. Peppers in the game, Kirk lined up behind Spate, and now they'll, they'll move over and direct snap it to Peppers, who's got a whole bunch of blockers running left. Jabril Peppers almost busted it, a shoestring tackle. So, Spate didn't fool anybody. But. Yeah, well, I think he may have. The, <laughs> the innovation of Jim Harbaugh here. I love how Spate, who actually is acting here, he's under the guard. The ball is right here. Does a good job. I was a little bit confused. Now that's not a look they probably have seen much of on film. They're used to that wildcat look, but not when the quarterback gets under center underneath the guard and Desmond King there maybe saves a touchdown. He was close to being able to hit a crease there. I think Jabril will be disappointed that that arm tackle brought him down. He got seven on the run. Now Davion Smith just patiently picks his way behind the blocker and fights for another first down. Yeah, Jim Harbaugh is a, a head coach that you practice things during the week. And majority of coaches, they get into the game, they don't call them. He gets into the game and he calls them. He, he allows his players to have fun with some of these plays, especially when you have a guy with the skill set of a Jabril Peppers. Tim Drevno, Harbaugh told me, calls most of the plays. Jed Fish is involved, and Harbaugh calls the third most plays, in, in his opinion. But you're right, it's a collaborative, and he's got that big NFL-style play sheet. Here's play action. Spate has it. Loops it downfield. Chesson makes the catch down near the 20. J.U. Chesson as they get deep for the first time tonight. Well, Jake Butt in the middle takes two defenders with him, and it opens it up completely. For Chesson, that, that's that's the backup safety there, Gare, who's trying to slow down Chesson there. But it opened up in the middle because a safety and a linebacker occupied with Jake Butt and a great job of protection. That play took a while to develop, but Spade had time to be able to make the read and deliver the throw with accuracy. 105th career catch for Chesson, the senior. McDoom in motion takes the hand up and the freshman breaks free. You can hear the Michigan fans here saying doom as they do in the big house. <laughs> well, he gets to the edge. We saw that in the game at East Lansing, what he can do when he has a chance to be able to get out there. We talked about how they make you respect the stretch and the, the outside aspect, the perimeter of where they can run the football. And what that does is it keeps the corners and those outside linebackers, have, they have to be respectful and mindful of that. And it opens things back up into the interior where their strength is with that offensive line. Young guy gets to top speed in a hurry, oh, doesn't he? sure does. A high formation handoff. Smith hammers forward. It'll set up a third and short. Jaleel Johnson, your guy in the middle there on the stop. Jaleel Johnson on that play just gives you an idea of what he can do. He's taken on the center. He's got an H-back that he's got to deal with. He blocks him or gets off of his block. Dealing with Khalid Hill. I mean, that was he, he took on about 600 pounds of blocks there to be able to come up with that tackle. This feels important, doesn't it? If the Hawkeye defense sure can force another field goal attempt down here in the red zone, maintain contact. Wolverines trying to go up double digits. Need two on this third down. Spate rolls and delivers on the sideline catch made there by Darbo and it's a first down and goal you move the launch point get spade away from potential pressure there from Iowa instead of sitting him in the pocket goes back to his mobility and how he can move around at 6'6 245 pounds throws the ball with great accuracy on the run it's Darbo. A how many 6'6 guys do not that? many not many you get down here this is where you see peppers in that wildcat look and they also love to throw the football to Jake Butt who's almost like a Jason Witten type of guy down in here because of his size and a mismatch at 6'6", 250. He's flexed right now up here. Ty Isaac gets his first carry today, and he barrels in for a Michigan touchdown. 
The fourth, the Michigan tailback, the senior from Illinois, and Isaac with his fifth rushing touchdown of the Wolverines cap a 72-yard march. Two things about that play is Michigan down inside that five-yard line. They spread you out, and then they run the football with Ty Isaac at 230 pounds in the center. Mason Cole, we'll show you in a second, but does a nice job of holding around and picking up a huge block against that middle linebacker Josie Jewell that opened up the lane to score the touchdown. Allen for the conversion. We promised you'd see a lot of moving parts in this offense and we've already seen them in a quarter and a half. So versatile. They can attack in so many different ways. Like I said, they spread you out. Keep an eye on the center right here. Watch him pull around. Does a nice job right there on Jewell. Keeps pushing him, pushing him. And that opened up the lane there for Isaac to get in there. Very efficient drive. Nine plays, 72 yards and a touchdown for the Wolverines. Saturday Night Football, presented by Walmart. Brought to you by K Jewelers for 100A. I was trying to get him fired up here, but this, this place is quiet. As Iowa fans, Kirk, I sensed some pessimism in the taverns and among the tailgaters. Yeah. Well, <laughs> last uh, night, tonight, I, they, they were afraid if, that their team would be overmatched, and you, you think they got to really do something right now. And there's confusion. King collects it at the five after a collision. And Desmond King was electric, fortunate to get back to the 20. See what the Hawkeyes can do in this possession. But first, let's check in on Toasty Truck with the Bear, Chris Felica for the Athlete Tree question. Thank you, gentlemen. Visual Athlete oh, question tonight. Tell. In this 1983 Iowa Hawkeyes coaching photo, can you name the five assistants that came up, that went on to become FBS head coaches? Billy Snyder. Offensive coordinator, yeah. Uh, Barry Alvarez. Uh, Bill McCartney. That's, that's Dan Bo McCartney. There's Bobby, Dan McCartney, yeah. Bobby Stoops. There's Kirk Ferentz. And that would be your five for five. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, now you're getting into my wheelhouse, Jared. Don't Parker. even mess around there. <laughs> John Daniels carries. Barrels forward. Daniels bouncing off people. A physical run out across the 35. That's the kind of spark that they need. Do we need to even have Bear come back here? Well, well, well we will confirm to answer the <laughs> thought question. Kirk Herb, three to perfect, five for five. Getting the five. No, I, I helped him out with one. You did help you, you got Dan, one. Okay, yeah. Dan McCartney, you got him. Eric Ferris, you, Bob I, I, Stoops, <laughs> Barry Alvarez, Bill Steiner, Dan McCartney. Knew that would be Mike, your real Mike house Stoops tonight. was hired. Barry Alvarez was a high school coach here in Iowa, by the way, when, when Hayden Fry. Capone was a, just still <laughs> coach in high school, and he plucked <laughs> him out and gave him the job. Oh, right, let's see if man. that Daniels powerful run gets the Iowa offense going. Bethard on the slant, and it's complete, not incomplete. Smith couldn't collect it. Only 10 passing yards so far for Bethard. We, we talked at the break before Iowa came out about you lose 41 to 14, and it's been a frustrating year. You're coming back home after that embarrassing loss. You knew the crowd, you knew the energy of Kinnick Stadium would be behind you. You get down 10 to nothing. I, I don't know. I just kind of sense, based on the buzz and the feel in this stadium, this is a huge drive for Iowa to keep their fans and keep this this football team into believing that they can do, uh, you know, they can compete tonight. So they, they need a drive and try to get some points on the board here. Can they get some spark plays, Kirk? Can they get some chunks? Because it's so hard to methodically move it against the Michigan defense. This guy's provided a spark. Daniels, again, muscles up near the 44, he's third and short. So impressive considering what he's running into. He's giving his offensive line a lot of credit too because Daniels is known as that thumper, but he's getting some great blocks up front and a now, great push in that inside zone play. What do you do here if you're Greg Davis, Kirk? Do you try to throw it? Do you try to run it for two yards knowing that Daniels has had some success? Well, Wolverines will crowd the line, you figure. Yeah, I think you give them a couple plays and you see what Michigan's in, what kind of pressure set that they're in, and, and you go where they aren't. Right now they're, they're spread out, and it looks like the, the interior with, with Daniels could be an option. 
They crowd the middle. Daniels gets it, and he gets nothing. This has been a problem all year for Iowa. Michigan is so stout. That's for Sean Gary, the freshman, in watch, the mix there. Watch how they get off blocks. I mean, watch how quickly they get off blocks. Watch three at the bottom here get off his block and come back and make that play. That's a true freshman. Most highly touted recruit last year. 6'5", 287 pounds. I remember watching it. I don't watch that recruiting very often because it drives me crazy with the hats. <laughs> but he came down to Clemson in Michigan, and he picked Michigan. Straightforward punt, Kirk. Calusa's going to get it off without any drama and any mishap. And he's going to not get dead. Can they get there? Yes. That is perfection. After Look at Calusi charging down the field after uh, a lot of crazy stuff in the first quarter. Let's see if uh, Iowa defense can create a spark play of their own. Down 10. <laughs> they fake it to him, and Spade's going to fire into traffic out of his end zone. That's how much trust they have, but Butt was well covered by Josie Jewell. His linebackers and safeties will be challenged all night tonight against the run and also against the play action against the tight end, Jake Butt. So there's crossing routes. Interesting, as you said, the confidence they have in Spate. Backed up at their own two-yard line here and still coming out firing on that first and ten. Spate 6 of 12 for 68 yards. More what you expect. Smith in the I formation hit and a safety by the Iowa defense. Jaleel Johnson burst across the line and the Hawkeyes get on the board with a safety. Chris, we talked about how quick Jaleel Johnson is. 6'4", 200, or 310 pounds. He's, he's like Wadley is on the offensive side. Watch him shoot this gap. And watch how quick he is and able to come off that block. Kalis kind of gave him a shoulder, but nobody accounted for him. And with him, that's the one guy you've got to worry about penetration backed up in your own, own two-yard line, and he makes them pay for it. He knocked a 230-pounder backward, didn't he? Pylon cam shows it. Well, somebody was going to have to make a play, Kirk, and that 54-yard punt by Kaluzzi, we've had some fun at his expense. Yeah, but he came up big. Knocked it down to the two, and then the Iowa defense. We said it's going to take some stuff like that to, to hang around with a talented Wolverine team and see what they can do after the free kick here. Well, Jaleel Johnson, one of the better interior players I've seen this year in the Big Ten. Has that, that outstanding combination like most of those great inside defensive tackles have. They, at 300 pounds, they can be steady and firm with their strength, but also have the ability to shoot a gap and take a chance from time to time. And that's what Johnson did, and it paid off for him in a big way there. Coaches describe him as quick and violent, which is yeah. a good that's thing a great, down there. That's a beautiful pitch. combination yeah. for a defensive tackle. So, Allen teeing it up at the 20. That's a heck of a kick. It's driven on a line and fielded by Desmond King along the sideline, and he runs it out across the 30. So, Wolverines will take that as the Iowa Hawkeyes go back on offense down now, 8. Invited service men and women around the world who had allegiances to Iowa and Michigan to send us pictures and, and many half tonight. And we offer our salute again on this Veterans Day weekend. Hawkeyes with their special logo tonight on the helmets. After that defensive spark, back to work here from the 31. Play action, Bether rolling out and wants to go downfield. Just no hope. It's just really, really going to be tough to beat these Michigan DBs who are playing aggressive tonight. Uh, they, they try. We were just talking at the break. With, why Why would they maybe try to throw the ball to Wadley? And that time, they actually tried. They tried to sneak him out of the backfield, but give Michigan a lot of credit for picking him up there as he tried to get downfield behind him. What Michigan's essentially done is they're locking their corners against these Iowa wide receivers. They're putting Stribling and Lewis out there and just saying, hey, we got these guys. And the other nine are defending the short pass and, and the run game. Second and ten handoff. Very little for Daniels. It'll be another one of those third and long. Yeah, Bethard two of seven for ten yards tonight. Yeah, both catches by Smith. And their best receiver coming into the night is Riley McCarron with 
George Kittle down the big tight end. And he has not even had an opportunity yet to make a play. Those Michigan corners just locking him down. Season really changed when Matt Vandenberg, the top receiver, went down early this year. It's been very tough to get any kind of separation. Just very few open targets for Beathard all season long. They need eight. Here they come. Beathard spinning free and hit as he throws incomplete. And here comes another punt. Relentless pressure by the Wolverines again. Again, they, they brought the they brought the middle line of the outside linebacker here. He was the one who was walked up. McCray, he was right here. They knew he was coming. But the key once again is Jabril Peppers using him on third down again as a spy. The blitz is picked up. He has to bail. But look who's closing in on him. Such quickness when he makes up his mind. You know, I remember Tyron Matthew at LSU. He did so many different things for that LSU defense that year. Kind of reminds you of that as far as how quickly he can play the game. He's also a good returner, which Peppers is, and they kick it to him. That's a good punt by Kaluzzi, a fair catch made at the 20-yard line. The Viper position is what they call that hybrid position that yeah. the Peppers and plays. In, and in today's world of college football with the spread attacks, that Viper position is asked to do a lot of different things. 47-yard punt. Peppers may be too tired after running around after the quarterback to return it. Goodyear providing aerial coverage. Watching over the hard work and determination of blimp-worthy athletes. More than 60 years. Goodyear official sponsor of the college football playoff. You know, that Viper position is an outside linebacker slash nickelback slash safety. You've got to do everything at that spot. Spate rolls out and slings it low, bouncing off the carpet in front of Chesson. Another first down throw, though, called by the Wolverines. Yeah, Play very, calling coordinate. Yeah, but I think it's it's the way to be when you trust your quarterback. You give him a chance there. I think a lot of times, first and ten, you're going to get the best coverage to try to make a throw on, especially with play action, because he's going to typically have time to throw. Again, they put him in a pocket on first and ten, and they've rolled him out quite a bit as well. 14 runs, 13 passes called by the Wolverine staff. There's another pass. This is Chesson on the edge, but right there is Ben Neiman. The linebacker stops him. It'll be third and long. That's Iowa's version of the Viper. They, they stay in their base defense. They play their four down linemen and three linebackers. And Neiman goes out there and is asked to play in space. 6'3", 230. So a lot of times he's up in the box trying to be physical, but they also ask him to play out in space. And the guy that was an outstanding high school athlete, played receiver, defensive back. His dad is a defensive coordinator over at Rutgers, so he's been around the game his whole life. And the Hawkeyes get Michigan off the field on third and nine. Spate retreating, looping it downfield. Darbo could not come up with it. It's a missed opportunity. Regamba, the freshman, recovered, but that one on the quarterback? Well, I think the timing was off here. He felt pressure. He really couldn't get his entire body into it when he followed through. And I think it, the ball ended up floating on him. But this matchup was interesting. A little double move, a stutter and go. And get, you got to give Regumba a, really a lot of credit for turning around, recognizing the ball, and then knocking it away. Allen boots it away. King charges up, makes the catch at the 42, loses the ball. He scrum near midfield, and Iowa's going to get it back as the Hawkeyes dodge a special teams disaster there. Usually the sure hand to Desmond King. He is so eager to make a play tonight. So badly wants to make a play. Josh Jackson, the seaman, actually knocked the ball out of his hands there. Yeah. They keep it. Now 4.14 to go before halftime. The way this game has gone, Chris, when he gets his hands on the ball, he, he probably is the best chance for them to make a play. Michigan see that. Look at the corners. Look how tight they are in coverage. Wadley, nowhere to go. Again, the play just blown up in the backfield. Does well to get a yard out of it. Well, it, 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 again, it, you're defending Iowa right now. Quarterback run, run game, non, it's not a factor. You know, it's not a spread attack where the quarterback's going to do zone reads. So you check that off the box. We don't have to worry about that. Vertical pass game. Nope, we're not worried about that. Okay. Don Brown, most aggressive defensive coordinator, most aggressive defense in the country. 
just go after them. Attack the gaps. Shoot the gaps. Don't worry about anything else until they prove to us that they can make us pay for that aggressive attack. See if they bring the pressure here. They will rush five on second down. Beathard flips it over, and it's complete. And off and running is widely. There's the playmaker in Michigan territory. There's their best chance for an explosive play. Down there, to the 25. There you go. You don't have to attack to the outside on the perimeter. Your best player is right here who's just going to get a matchup against a linebacker. That's your best play. It's an easy throw for the quarterback. The ball gets out of his hands relatively quickly. And it's a it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup with your quickest player against a, uh, against a linebacker who's 250 pounds. 24th catch of the season for Wiley. Just the third completion tonight for Beathard. They get 27 yards. Wadley's got it again in the flat. A couple blocks and he spins free. Still running hard down inside the 20. They found something they could use. We got a flag that came in here late. Wolverines are pointing Iowa's direction. One of the Michigan players picked it up. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, defense number 90. Half the distance from the end of the run, automatic first down. It's Brian Monet, so it is on Michigan and Iowa. Will march down now, in scoring position inside the 10. Yeah, that, that was just a, a mistake there by Monet on the right side of the screen. Watch him come in and just push the offensive line mayor, Boone Myers, right in front of three different officials. Pretty easy call after the play. But there's Wadley again. Hope he, I, I hope he got great refs last night because if Iowa's going to hang around tonight, Wadley's going to have to be the guy running and catching the ball to make plays for the Hawkeyes. He's got it again. Stutter step in a short game. Inside of two and a half, Michigan gets the ball to begin the third quarter. But Iowa Kirk, if they could get off the mat here, sparked by that safety, cut into this lead by, by scoring a touchdown, huge boost for this, this offense, which is absolutely. really struck. Yeah, absolutely. Boy, Wiley has such lateral quickness. He gets the ball in his hands, and right away, it's a two, 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 two. I mean, he's just looking for a little crease. Yeah, Michigan defense against Michigan State in the red zone a few weeks back. Seems like eight different plays. Michigan State inside that 10-yard line and didn't come away with any points. Beathard rolls out, fires far side, making the catch and getting hammered. Is Riley McCarron did well to hang on as Jordan Lewis, who's given up only a handful of yards all season, made the hit. Yeah, Third that, down now. Yeah, great coverage, but how about the concentration that time by McCarron to somehow hold on to that football? Goes up into the air, gets hit right away and held on to the ball. But again, now it's third down. So you can combine two of Michigan's strengths, third down defense and red zone defense, and keeping people out of the end zone. Interesting how you got Don Brown approaches red zone defense. He's not afraid to play a man down here and blitz. I mean, that's not normal stuff in college football. Not. We talked to him this week. He said pressure is the way to go shoot the gaps break seven hold up one-on-one -on, -one on the outside he also is in favor at times of doubling your best receiver but i'm guessing here it's about pressure and trying to move the line of scrimmage back and come after bethard if he decides to throw the football here play man to man on the outside and if you're iowa you know if you're going to throw the ball you're going to get man to man and Beathard, either you get to roll him out away from the pressure, or you look for that rub route, try to get Wadley or one of your receivers matched up against man-to-man -man. picks and rubs, anything to try to free a receiver up down in this area. It's very tight. Last year's Iowa team, which got to the Big Ten Championship game undefeated, was able to run it in from positions like that. They could muscle you. 28 red zone rushing touchdowns last year. Only 12 so far this year. So you got man-to-man -man right here. You could try to come up with some type of a rub route there. Beathard looks back to the right and just airmails it. Smith was double covered. Nobody open over there. And here comes a field goal attempt. Not sure what C.J. Beathard was, was thinking there. He 
I spoke too soon, by the way. The offense is still on the field. They may go for this. Yeah. Kirk Ferentz saying, hey, how many times against this defense are you going to get down inside the five-yard line? And we just talked about We saw this just a few weeks ago against Michigan State. Eight times inside the 10, zero points. Can they down, they look to the left, that rub route? That third retreats, flips it in the flat, screen, touchdown! That whole drive was Akron Wadley, and the Hawkeyes are hanging tight. They'll go for two now, try to tie it up here. Great call against man-to-man. -man. You had the rub out to the left, and you had the back Wadley matched up against the linebacker but because of the blitz he ends up freeing up nobody picked him up wadley 37 receiving yards there in that drive and his third receiving touchdown wadley to the right of bethard three receivers to the left DJ looks that way, fires incomplete, in and out of the hands of Adrian Falconer, one of the young receivers, and Michigan holds on to the lead by two. And there's that rub round. How about this, Chris? Third down. You want to get the one. You got the ball earlier to Wadley. McCray's been blitzing. Gideon's been blitzing. And they're both going to shoot these gaps. What it does is it frees up Wadley to sneak out to the left. McCray, watch him. He actually, after the blitz, he's working to get out here. He wants to try to help because that's his man, but he's not there in time. Easy throw, easy read again, and a great call anticipating pressure in the blitz from the linebackers by Greg Davis. I was going to say they outfoxed Brown that they time, sure right? Anticipated the blitz? Well, they, based on the trends in the scouting report, you know, Don Brown, he, he wears his emotions on his sleeve. He, you know that he's going to bring the pressure down in that area, especially on fourth down. Falcon is a young guy that's being pressed into duty tonight with a shorthanded receiving core. Should have had that catch. Absolutely, but again, you get man-to-man. -man, you put three receivers kind of in a bunch formation. You do some kind of a rub, and one guy, the inside, typically the outside guy, cuts to the inside, and he's open. Not going to give Peppers a chance to make a return, are they? Well, they do. Peppers is up there, makes the catch, and you hold your breath if you're an Iowa fan when number five's got it, gets it out to the 37, a minute 19 before halftime. San Perret, Mark May, Mac Brown in that studio with the Capital One halftime report coming up. Update you on what's going on in Seattle, where the Huskies were down 11 at the break to the Trojans. Terrific game. Clemson upset by Pittsburgh this afternoon. Now, now, now you're going to see... Wilton Spate in a in a two-minute drill, up-tempo, two timeouts, taking field goal, worst case. They're trying to get points here at the end of this half. My guys rush for Spate. Cannot escape. He'll be sacked by your guy, Jaleel Johnson, who has become a dominant force in this half. Yeah, and right now there's a mismatch on that right side of the Michigan offensive line. Kyle Kalis, the, the senior out of Lakewood, Played at St. Ed's against my guy, Khalil Johnson. He has such great quickness. He gives him a little move. And again, 310 pounds, he's able to get there. Wolverine's trying to play with some tempo after the sack and the completion made there to Grant Perry out to the, you know, about the 40, so it'll be third and eight. Kind of tempo, kind of not after the sack because now they're willing to let the clock work down just a little bit, saving those two timeouts. Spade over the middle, almost intercepted. Coming back was Neiman, that long arm linebacker to break it up, and it's fourth down. Well, he read that perfectly. I cannot tell you how challenging this is for an outside linebacker. It's 6'3, 230 pounds. And I know it's their system, and I know it's what they do, but you have to tip your cap to a guy that's out there in space defending wide receivers with his length and his size to be able to. Usually you get subbed out for a nickelback. Not Neiman. He stays out there and makes plays like that. Almost came up with a pick. He did. Allen, nice deep boot driving King back inside the 10. Desmond looking for some room. And the Wolverines coverage team all over him. He does hold on to the football. I thought that ball almost came out. They were clawing at it. Brandon Watson looked like he almost knocked that football out of the hands of Desmond King in Michigan. 
if they would have been able to knock that out, would have been able to have a chance to get the ball at the 10-yard line. Let's see how close that football came out. Noah Furbush was down there helping on the stop, he, too. Yeah. To be able to catch the ball, but right there it almost came out. Wow. He's had, he had the one near Muff. They retained possession earlier in the half. I was just going to take a knee and get out of here 10-8. If you're an Iowa fan, doesn't that sound like a game that you want to – if you would have said, hey, it's going to be 10-8, <laughs> not 10-7, but 10-8, you're going to be trailing? That's, that sounds like an Iowa score. And they have outgained the Wolverines in the first half. Michigan gaining just a buck 24. End of the first half in Iowa City. Sam Ponder will speak with Kirk Ferris right after these messages. Well, Coach, what has enabled the success of your defense against an offense who really hasn't struggled with anybody? Well, you know, they got off to a really good start. I think our guys just kind of dug in a little bit. They're, they're playing hard. After that last drive on offense, where do you see the most opportunity for your offense to be effective in the second? Yeah, it would be nice to, you know, finish the drive or at least finish the two-point play. But uh, you know, we're going to have to try to mix it a little bit. We've been running the ball fairly effectively. Uh, you know, we're going to have to find a way to pass a little bit better. All right. Thanks for your thanks, time, Coach. Undefeated Michigan in a tough battle on the road as Wilton Spate and that Michigan offense held in check, Kirk. When you consider that Iowa missed a field goal, gave the Wolverines the ball with a 30 after a punt mishap, only with down by two points now. And to consider they were down 10 to nothing. And the game looked like it might be getting out of reach. They come up with safety, the touchdown, all of a sudden they're back in it. And this is exactly what they wanted. Just hang around for a half, make things interesting. And now the ball goes to Michigan. And Wilton Spate, team that has not been able to run the ball well, at least in the first half, only 45 yards on the ground. There's the short kick taken by the up man who loses it. And the Hawkeyes fall on it. A turnover gives Michigan the ball. Brady Ross recovered the fumble, the fullback. And it's Michigan making a special teams mistake. Wow, what a start to this second half. Hill is a tremendous athlete. There's a lot of different bodies coming in at him. And I don't know, who he, did, did he punch at the ball or did he get his helmet on the football? Actually, he's all man getting blocked back into him. Glasgow, it's a self Glasgow. fumble. Yeah, Jordan Glasgow sent that, sent that ball into the air and the Hawkeyes get on top of it. But Brady Ross. The awareness there. That ball could have potentially gone out of bounds, but he jumps on top of it, and now the Hawkeyes with outstanding field position. This is a rarity, a Michigan turnover. Just the seventh on the season. Fourth fumble. And spark that Iowa needed. Daniels on a reverse. Smith has room. And Michigan actually strings it out. He'll cut it back. It's a nice first down gain. Runs a long way to get eight yards. They open up the playbook. Well, what, what an effort here by Chris Wormley, 43, there on the edge. Does a good job of staying home. And then watch him fight at 300 pounds against the quarterback to try to force him back inside. And Smith, who's known as their fastest wide receiver, does a good job stretching it out. And then eventually he realized he couldn't get around Wormley, so he cut back underneath to at least get positive yards. He spent time this week working on plays like that, trying to beat this aggressive Michigan defense. It's hard to beat him at this. Daniels is stacked up in heavy traffic. It'll be another one of those third and shorts now, Kirk. They are those second and short, third and short. Michigan does a such a good job of that defensive line getting low and pushing that line of scrimmage back. Something they really pride themselves on. Time Ryan Glasgow did a nice job along with Matthew Godin. Just Godin pushing that, that line of scrimmage back, and now it's that third and short. You might, want to, a couple get, plays you to might want to get to the edge here. Well, they don't get to the edge. They don't get the first down. It'll be fourth down at a yard. Really very marginal field goal range. Miguel Racines can, can make it from here. He did so in practice, but we'll see if uh, Ferentz keeps the offense on the field. Well, Kirk Ferentz has been very aggressive tonight with his decision making. Five and four on the year, coming off a disappointing loss. He's sending a message to his team, taking on the Iowa or taking on the Michigan Wolverines. 
Daniels in the eye on fourth down. Beathard, sneak. Got it, but barely. Had to navigate his way through some traffic there. Well, and it wasn't a clean snap. Well, he got, he got some help by the big fullback, Kulik, from behind. That's why he made it. Watch Kulik, 45. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You're going to go right through him. There you go. <laughs> That's legal now, remember. He almost fumbled that, though. That snap kind of came out. Of his he, it was almost like he put it, picked him up, put him underneath his, his arm there, and just carried him across the first down marker. Whatever it takes. Wadley, the big playmaker, late in the first half for the Hawkeyes, back in the game. They feed him. Cuts it back. Stutter step in the clear. Wadley down in the red zone. And the Hawkeyes really threatening to take the lead now. How about, how about that little shake there on Channing Scrimbling? Watch him, number eight there in the back. You give him a chance to set you up. Oh, my gosh. That is dangerous. She Goodbye. Right around you. And look who else he went by. Peppers whiffed on the tackle. He's done that all night tonight. He, if you give him just a little bit of room to work with, he is so quick in space. Hawkeye's running game reawakening tonight when desperately needed. Feed him again. He's got a crease again. Wadley just dancing past defenders. Another first down inside the 10. 190 pounds. Chris, you talked about how they've tried to put some weight on him. But I'll tell you what, I don't know how much weight he needs when he can move like this. Michigan had initial penetration. He gets by that. I mean, he is tough to tackle. DeMonte Thomas. DeMonte Thomas had a free, a free shot at him. It's tough to tackle a guy you can't see. First and goal. For the... 17-point underdog Hawkeyes here trying to claim the lead after they once trailed 10 nothing Again widely hammered that time just driven down by the middle linebacker Ben Gideon Great blocks by James Daniels the center the blood and there by the way Yeah, the blood Gideon. been there all night with Gideon. <laughs> the right guard Sean Welsh just really getting a good push. They got a fullback in there. Just helping out and weeding. Come on, Kirk. You got 10-8. The linebacker's bleeding. and second and goal. It's a good stuff. We're at Kinnick Stadium, man. <laughs> We're in Iowa City. Now can they power it in? Line crowded again. So Bethard rolls out. No one to throw it to. And he'll be knocked down behind the line there. As Delano Hill, the safety got him. Yeah, Delano Hill does a good job of coming out of coverage. Michigan had all the receivers checked down. Peppers actually took the fullback out in the flat. It freed up Hill to be able to close in on Beathard. I like the call. I like the idea. Instead of trying to power it in there, you, you go with a bootleg and roll the quarterback Beathard away from that pressure, hoping to try to catch Michigan napping, but they were at home and playing very disciplined defense there on that attempted pass. So Wadley out of the game and Sean Daniels in on third down. Beathard from the pocket now has to escape back paddling back pulling no and just fires it into the carpet. He was knocked down after the play. Mike McCray pressured him and it's fourth down. Michigan intentionally wanted to force Beathard if he's going to scramble, he scrambled to his left. And that's exactly where Mike McCray was waiting as a spy. They were not going to let him move to his right. Nice job there by Maurice Hurst, a big defensive tackle. It, kind of a twist there. Forced Beathard out of the pocket to the left, and McCray waiting on it. Keith Duncan is a true freshman kicker. Very reliable on chip shots. And he has still not missed from inside the 30-yard line. Good from 25, and Iowa has the lead. 11-10, of course it is. At Rutgers and then Michigan State, Ohio State, at East Lansing next week before the big showdown in Columbus Wolf the Wolverines. It, it gets complicated, Kirk. There's some interesting I, allegiances there. Yeah. There's the pooch kick. Actually, boots it deep. He fake pooched it and kicked it over the head of Evans, and it'll be a touchback. I, I think if you're in the Big Ten region, if you're a Penn State fan tonight, 
you, you want to see Michigan lose tonight if you're a Penn State fan because at the end of the day you want Penn State and Ohio State to be tied for a Big Ten championship or a Big Ten East division championship which would send Michigan or send Penn State rather to Indianapolis if you're an Ohio State fan you're pulling for Michigan tonight to win wait a second back up what you mean what <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah yeah you, you have to yeah. Then if Ohio State were to win out and beat Michigan, it's a three-way tie, and then that would send Ohio State to Indianapolis. Michigan in a rare position behind in the second half. It's a flea flicker, Spate, checking it downfield. Under through it, and it's almost intercepted by King. King came back and recovered. Darbo had him beat, but again, Spate under through the deep ball. Curve. Yeah, and, and Davian Smith on the toss back on the flea flicker may have affected the timing. Watch him toss this ball back to Spate. And right there, he has to go extend himself, gather himself, and throw. And that's what forced the ball to be thrown late and gave Desmond King a chance. He actually had Jake Butt off to the left all alone because the safety was out of position. But he took the post for the touchdown, came up short. A great spot by you. That, that timing was messed up there. And that's a wobbly throw by Spate. Not, not the way he's a great deep ball thrower. Yeah, he's got a big arm. I think that's the area that we've seen him improve the most. You know, the first five games, most of his throws were, were short, five and ten yards downfield. In the last four games, boy, we've seen him really extend and see this right here. Look at look, 15 yard throws early in the year, not very many. In the last uh, last four games, he's really aired it out that time again. Just the rhythm and the timing, just not quite there. Now Michigan faces a third and two, and Spates in the shotgun. Hawkeyes crowd the line, Spate from the pocket, delivers incomplete. That was thrown behind Jake Butt. Interesting lack of identity in this Michigan offense tonight, Kirk. They got to punt it again. Yeah. Iowa brings pressure with Jewel right up the middle, but watch Bauer move over, reads the quarterback's eyes, and because of the pressure up the middle, the tight end's open, but he's throwing it away from that linebacker and essentially throws his intended target Jake Butt away from the football. Hawkeye's going to get the ball back up one. Allen gets it away. Desmond King driven back and waves for a fair catch. But Michigan for just the second time this season trailing in the second half of the offense tonight sputtering on the road. the ball much more than they've run it tonight. The teams have run on Iowa this year frequently. Well, they, they, their play calls 16 runs and 19 passes, but I am surprised by the lack of success at the running game. 53 yards rushing, and we're halfway through this third quarter. It makes you wonder with Jim Harbaugh and his offensive staff what they're going to try to come back with. I still think you got to go back to being able to run that football for this offense. Wadley, who was the spark running and receiving, gets a first down handoff and battles for about a yard as we send it to Cassidy. What's up, Cassidy? Wow, man, across the country. Georgia defense playing well. They sure tonight. are. It's going to be one of those Saturdays. Yep. Now they're undefeated on the ropes. Michigan here down a point. Clemson already, as we told you, has been stunned at home by Clemson. Third down play coming up now for Iowa. This place is so quiet. His fans are got to be pleasantly surprised with what they've seen. Well, their offense is on the field, so you got you got to be quiet, very attentive. 11 to 10 lead, eight minutes to go in the third quarter. You got great fans here. Some of these fans have been around the days they used to gather around the radios and listen to Iowa when they had 17 straight non-winning seasons before Hayden Fry came in here. Think about that. Different deal now. Loyal fans. But as loyal as they were, they did not expect to upset Michigan tonight. And they get the six here in third down. Better from the pocket. Clutches, Chase, sacks. Could not get away. As good coverage downfield. And Chase Winovich with his fourth sack of the season. So here's the change up from Don Brown. Pressure, 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 right? Now they're going to drop. Now they're going to drop. Different look. Instead of bringing that pressure, they still try to get Peppers in, but it's just still rushing four. They still have their spy. 
but they changed up some coverage, confused Beathard and his receivers, made him hesitant, and that's where the pass rush or the rush is able to get home. So a three and out forced by the Michigan defense, and now Pepper standing at his 40. Will they kick it to him? It's a high boot. He's going to have a chance back pedaling inside the 35. Peppers trying to cut it back. Does so. Electric. Jabril Peppers bangs down into Iowa territory. You hold your breath every time number five has the ball. He's got to be so excited to finally get a chance. It's been, I don't know, about a month since yeah. he's really had a legitimate chance to have a big return. I thought he might say that. The Colorado game kind of fixed that. For a lot of fun, so he killed them. Yeah. Helps us out up here in the booth, too. Hey, Jerry. Hey. And shoot George. He's down George. In the truck there, keeping warm. Higdon is the back. He's got the toss toward the boundary, and it's crowded over there, and he's knocked down. We keep talking about why is it Michigan running the football? Maybe it's because of this defensive line tonight from Iowa. Keep in mind, this off this defense from Iowa gave up 359 yards rushing last week. Look how they're playing tonight back home at Kinnick Stadium. Michigan tries to run into the boundary that time with Higdon, but the pursuit, quickness, and the ability to get off blocks from Iowa's defensive line, the difference there. It's the big Canadian, Faith Akankati. Playing Rip, great the last by few Saquon weeks. Barkley, who then questioned their heart a week ago yeah. after running yeah. through them. Different team tonight. Second and 11. Spade on play action is chased. Ball knocked out of his hands. It's a fumble recovered by Higdon, and Michigan retains possession. That's the closest they've got there. Parker Hesse came around the edge, and Nelson as well. Hesse got to him, forced the ball out. See his arm starts to come forward, but the ball already out before it does. That's why it's a fumble. This Michigan offensive line, Kirk, you're right. They're being whipped up front by Iowa. Absolutely. Third and 13. But the tight end to the right of the formation, Spade flips it back over the middle. Evans on the screen, slips one tackle, but is hammered right at the line of scrimmage by Desmond King. And Iowa's defense rises up again. Great recognition, great anticipation of the screen by Bo Bauer and the rest of this defense. You mentioned Desmond King. Watch Bauer 41. He sees those linemen coming out. Right there, he gets to Evans. But it's Desmond King getting off of his block. And this Iowa defense right now playing with a lot of fire, a lot of passion. Yeah, the fourth consecutive three and out for this Michigan offense. Kenny Allen not used to being this busy as a punter. This one up the side of his hook bounces at the 20 and goes out of bounds. So the clock moving rapidly in this Big Ten grinder. Tomorrow, speaking of grinders, NFL Insiders Gang at 10 Eastern on ESPN, followed by Sunday NFL Camp Down on Monday Night Football. It's the Bengals and the Giants at 8.15 with coverage beginning at 6 Eastern on Monday NFL Camp Down. Mention that clock, 4.37 to go in the third quarter. Who knows how this game will end, but if you would have thought about the beginning of this game or where we were with the two teams and the trends and everything that was on paper, this is what makes college football college football. This Iowa could not have drawn up a better scenario up 11 to 10 with 437 to go in the third quarter than the way this game has gone right now. Michigan's got to find some leadership and somebody's got to make a play for Michigan to be able to find a way to win this game. Blake Black down at two and Bethard snaps it. Finally running left. There's no shortage of leadership. There's a bunch of veteran guys on this Michigan team. Yeah. Seniors all over the place who have been hungry. And they've been remarkably consistently focused every game. This is really the shakiest they've looked this season. Well, when, when you're outscoring people by whatever it is, I mean, they've been scoring 48 points a game and, and only allowing 10 points a game. You're beating people by 38 points. This is when that leadership has to step up. It's one thing to lead when you're beating people by, by five touchdowns. It's another thing on the road. Now you're going to find out somebody's got to make a play. Wadley's got the pitch on the edge. Slices between two defenders and is knocked down just about a yard short of the marker. Sam? 
Yeah, to your point, we were just talking about this Michigan team. That's evident on the sideline. There's no signs of panic, but the sideline has been a lot quieter. And Jabril Peppers noticed it on that last drive and started getting people fired up. Everyone was yelling, we have to earn it. And if you think about it, Chris, this might be the first time this season that they really have to prove how much they want to earn it. Sam, I asked these Michigan players, has there been a moment when you've really had your feet to the fire? You've really been challenged. Kirk, they really couldn't think of one. No. They were, they were not grasping this year. for it. No. Not this year. Third and short. Again, it's been such a trouble spot. Hawkeye is trying to help out and push the pile. See they spot it. They will move the sticks based on where yeah. the ball is placed. You go back to your point there. Think about, though, the schedule that they've had and the teams that they have faced. I mean, they've been in the big house. They went to East Lansing, but it's you know, a, a drive down the road. They went to Rutgers on the road. This is truly their first test on the road in a tough environment. And, and I'm not saying they're panicking at all. I'm just saying this is this is where a Jabril Peppers, this is where a, you know, Wilton Spate, this is where somebody steps up and, and makes a play. Because right now, Iowa's gaining confidence as this game goes on. Exactly. Reeves his way. If they can get yards like that on the first down, it's going to be easy. That was Daniels' check it, but a, a, a nice big eight-yard gain. And just to reiterate, when Iowa runs the ball, they win. They, their four losses this year, they average 56 yards a game on the ground. The last two games they played against Wisconsin and Penn State, 83 yards and 30 yards. And their five wins, 229, uh, uh, 229 yards on the ground. And tonight, they have been running the football much better than we've seen in their last two or three games. Daniels bangs ahead. First down. It's an offensive line that's taken a lot of heat. They take a lot of pride in those big guys up front around an aisle. And this group has, many believe, really underperformed this season. But they're starting to gain confidence, as you said. If you're just tuning into this game, maybe watch some other games. To me, what I've seen, and the reason I was in a position right now, up 11 to 10, is old school Big Ten football battle in the trenches on both sides of the ball has favored the Hawkeyes. Marines crowned the line, and that time hammered Daniels for a yard gain. Here's our Pacific Life game summary. Check out the quarterback comparison. This is a surprise. You know, you mentioned starting on the road, tough environment. It's the first time for Wilton Spate as a starter, Kirk, and he's normally been a very accurate deep ball thrower. Hasn't really been there tonight. Beather just, just done enough. Yeah, neither, neither quarterback is really made much of a difference in this football game like i said I, I think it's been more about the offensive line and the defensive line we still have an entire quarter to go so they're going to have probably their opportunities they think it's a winely bether chased and just heaves it out of trouble That's and good. they'll have a little conversation about yeah. intentional grounding and flag is going to come out There's warmly was in his face yeah, he was not outside of the tackle box grounding. offense number 16. Lost it down at the spot of the foul. Third down. Two things. He wasn't outside of the tackle box, and he didn't have a receiver in that area, so it was a pretty easy call for the lead official tonight to call intentional grounding. Warmly does a nice job of fighting through. It's and, it's about but, 30 yards was the closest receiver. Yeah, yeah Bether just, <laughs> just throws it up there. Obviously, if he gets outside of that tackle box and throws it across the line of scrimmage, he'd be okay, but he was right there, right be, literally right behind the center. And moves it back now. Third and 21. They got to make it to the Michigan 45 to move the sticks. Michigan flips it up inside. It's widely and kind of a shovel pass look and a short gain. Maurice Hurst stops him. And Michigan's defense a little pumped up now. Final minute of the quarter. They're going to get the ball back. Yeah, they really go back to that second down play where Iowa took a chance. They try to have, hit on a double move to McCarron. Great coverage, which has allowed the pressure with Wormley to get there, and that set up that third and forever. So great job by the Michigan defense to get the ball back to their offense in Wilton Spate. All uh, Barron's wants now is just a clean punt from Paluzzi. Peppers will watch the ball right about. That's a very, very well done. And again, the punter's pumped up because he kept it away from number five, knocked that out of bounds inside the 10, and the Wolverines will have a long way to go. Still down a point. Our CFP rankings brought to you 
by Capital One. You mentioned what an eventful day it's been. Washington continues to trail by double digits, running out of time there in Seattle. You already have Clemson down and a shocker there in Death Valley. Michigan here on the ropes. Still an entire quarter to go. And just watching this SC Washington game up here in the booth, I mean, USC has really dominated that football game up 24 to 13 with 431 to go in that game. So SC looks like they're going to hold on. And if they knock Washington out, in my opinion, the Pac-12 is out of the playoff. Evans starts free, and that qualifies as a successful running yeah, that, play that, for Michigan that, tonight. That's kind of what you expect from Michigan right there. That, that's, that's a good place for them to start this drive. Well, Sam Ponder reported, the Wolverine veterans were saying, guys, we're going to have to earn it tonight. They sure are. End of three in Iowa City. Hawkeyes up by a point. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. Iowa faithful, pessimistic perhaps, coming into this game. Fearful their team might be blown out. That is not happening tonight, folks. Michigan, after a dismal offensive third quarter, they gained a total of 15 yards. Didn't have a first down. Begin the final quarter, down a point in a tough environment. They feed Evans. And Chris Evans barrels ahead. And they decided to feature the running game, Kirk. They do move the chains. Our Pacific Life game summary. Ty Isaac barreled in. This gave Michigan a 10-0 lead, but then a punt knocked dead at the two, turned things around. Big Jaleel Johnson stopping Smith in the end zone for a safety to get Iowa on the board. And then Bethard would flip it to Wadley here. This touchdown cut it within two. And a field goal in the third quarter has given the Hawkeyes their margin. Third straight running play. Davion Smith. Perhaps challenging their own offensive line to, to create something. It's, it's been rough going for them. Yeah, it, it certainly has. Iowa is doing a heck of a job at the point of attack. They have all night long. But Michigan, I think, at least here to start this drive, sticking with that running game. Something we've really not seen them do much of tonight. Team that against lesser competition averages more than 250 on the ground with just 65 tonight. Here's Spate, looking to throw on second down, steps up, big guy at 6'6", he's not a speedster, but he navigates for a four-yard gain, it'll be third and medium here. Yeah, it, it kind of kind of has that clock inside his mind, and he knows, great coverage downfield, receivers taken away, tight end taken away, so instead of taking a sack, he picks up three or four yards. Desmond King, been chippy all night with Darborough. Wow, he'd been lucky, careful. Yeah, lucky he didn't get another personal foul. He already had one earlier in the game. Big third down here. Need four. They've struggled on third down tonight big time. Spake gets protection. Delivers a strike and big Jake Butt hammers out across the fort. He was well covered but Spate dropped the dime well in there. Well covered? How did he make this throw? I mean, look at this angle right here. Tight coverage, somehow throws it in front of Jewel, the linebacker. Great focus by Jake Butt. Look at this angle. Ball's got a little bit of a wobble on it, but that's why Jake Butts recognizes one of the top tight ends in the game. Great throw with the accuracy, but outstanding concentration by Jake Butt with the soft hands. That goes on the Kuiper McShay draft reel, doesn't oh, it? Yeah. Evans handoff inside cuts it back and now the Wolverine running game finally yeah. starting to generate something not to mention not just the, for his future what's at stake in this game that's a big third down play keeps the drive alive takes the crowd out of it a little bit and you get back you run the football and you pick up six yards that, that's one you're going to put an asterisk next to for the entire Michigan season if they go down and score. Great point. He's caught four tonight, but one of the captains of this team. Not often do you see a tight end as a captain. There's just two of them on this roster. McDoom comes in motion. Now goes back and Spate. Going for the home run ball. Darbo couldn't get it again. And Wilton Spate one more time off target. They had the freshman out there and he overshot the receiver. Well, they, they tried to set this up little out and up 
They wanted to catch the defense's attention with Chris Evans, and it did. I mean, he's got his man beat. Look at the separation. He just misses him. Second time we've seen him throw the deep ball and not put enough air underneath it to allow his receiver to run underneath it where their timing has been impeccable. Really, the last three or four weeks, they missed them tonight when they've had their opportunities. What a different game this could be if he'd hit on a couple of those. As it is, it's third and four again. Play clock at three. Spate from the pocket delivers another strike. This one off the hands of Butt, who again was well covered that time by Neiman. And it's fourth down. Yeah, they, they gave the quarterback Spate another tough angle. Last time it was Jewel in coverage, and this time it's Ben ne Neiman. A good job of anticipating the ball getting thrown to Butt, of course, on third down. They take him out, make it tough on Spate to try to squeeze it in there. And Harbaugh, of course, the old quarterback for 15 years in the NFL, looked a little frustrated with his guy. Spate has not been able to cash in on the deep opportunities that have been there tonight. Allen punts it up high. A flag is down as the ball lands in the end zone. So we'll check the marker. Was it back at the line of scrimmage? He's not afraid to work the officials, is he? He's constantly barking and begging for calls over there. <laughs> Personal foul, roughing the center, 37, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Now they got Brandon Snyder, you cannot rough the center when he's got his head back delivering a snap. You don't see it called too often, and uh, Ference is hot. Yeah, his sophomore safety right in the middle, 37, over the left shoulder of this, the snapper. He goes right over top of him. This is one for Dave Kataya. Dave, I, we don't, Chris said it, we don't see this called very often. It doesn't happen very often. You have to give the center one second to come out of his stance and protect himself. Pretty clear that's under a second, but it's not a huge hit. But it isn't called very often at all. So, so a full second. A full second, yes. Scott Sibniski is the long snapper. He's about 230 pounds, pretty light to be in there. He got run over, and that, that's a huge call, which moves the ball to the 36. Davion Smith hammers ahead down near the 30. Another play to remember, Kirk, yeah, if absolutely. Michigan comes back and reclaims the lead. Keep in mind, this drive started on their own seven-yard line here. We're in the fourth quarter. Chips are on the table. you got to make plays. They converted on a third down. They missed butt on the other. Catch a break on fourth down on the punt. And now Michigan into Iowa territory here. Smith again. They've gotten back to some more basic Bo Schembechler high formation football after a lot of bells and whistles for much of this game. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's been it's been tough sledding for them. So I think they felt pretty good with two backup defensive backs. We've seen a backup safety with Gare and Ragumba, the, the true freshman at corner. They they've been more involved in trying to throw. But on this drive, you're right, Chris. They've kind of gone back to old school Michigan trying to pound this Iowa defense. Higdon is the back in the I formation on third and one. He's got the pitch. Penetration and a tackle for loss by the Hawkeye defense. And that is huge because it pushes them back into very marginal field goal range. He cacketed it. Defensive tackle. Watch how quickly he's able to penetrate. Shoots here. Desmond King sets the edge. Boy, look at that defense. They saw Higdon. Because he's undersized, they knew that they'd probably try to work the edge, and they beat that Michigan offensive line off the line of scrimmage. So Kenny Allen Kirk's going to try for a 51-yarder. This would be a career long by four yards to get Michigan the lead. Drives it. Right through. Wow, what a kick. Best field goal of his life. And he's a veteran player. And Michigan marches 60 yards in 12 plays. Harbaugh trusts Allen, who rewards it. It's a low two iron right through the crossbar. Wow. 13-11. Wolverines back on top. Later on ESPN, following the Golden Bears against the Cougs there in Pullman Sports Center at night. John Anderson and Lisa Kearney.
busy day in college football. And they'll take you through it right after the game over on ESPN. Also streaming live on the Watch ESPN app. USC is going to hold on, by the way, against Washington. So two top four and beaten teams are already down. And Michigan in a major battle here. Desmond King takes the kickoff and gets out to the 22-yard line. Kurt, time for your street cred brought to us by Allstate. You see the bus there? Yeah, yeah we, Allstate and I have been handing out street cred all year long on Twitter, spotlighting kind of the best of the best, uh, the team that had the performance of the week. And uh, you can join us on Twitter if you'd like every Saturday th today. Pittsburgh going to Death Valley and knocking off Clemson 43-42 has to be that story. And Nathan Peterman bringing kind of a lot of emotion into that game and playing his tail off as Pitt upends Clemson. As I said, that has to be the team of the week. Unless Iowa wins tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Double street cred. Once again, Wadley has been a weapon. He gets the edge here, slung out of bounds. Iowa fans want a yeah. flag and don't get one. That personal foul, though, that roughing of the center, which kept alive the drive and led to the field goal, will be talked about for a while around here if it yeah. produces the winning points of this game. Peppers is such a great player, but sometimes, you know, he, he gets emotional and been a couple times kind of been in the gray area where he's been close to being called for a 15-yard penalty. Got to be careful there and kind of, I know he plays off that emotion and passion, but he's got to be careful. Bathory play action. High throw off the hands of McCarron. It's been rare when they've had a receiver open tonight. That one's on the quarterback. Yeah, he had his man. It was a great call by Greg Davis. It's exactly what they wanted there. And that's their go-to receiver, Riley McCarron. Ball is just thrown high away from McCarron, who could, just didn't quite have a chance to, to bring that down. But they had a nice passing lane there with Michigan anticipating a run on second and five. Instead now, they got to deal with third and five. And you figure that... Don Brown will try to take time away from quarterback, come after him. They have not hit Bethard as much tonight as they'd hoped to. Gets it away, and it's behind the intended receiver there on the near sideline. And again, there was some pressure there. Taco Charlton got in there. It's fourth down. Go back to that second and five, and I'm not going to fault Greg Davis for being aggressive, but kind of a, went away from who they have been tonight when they've had success, especially in this second half. They, they've been kind of running the football with Wadley pretty successfully, and he tried to catch the Michigan defense napping, which they did, and they weren't able to execute on second down, and that's what, that's what cost them here. Galuzzi boots it high. Short. Pepper's going to let it bounce, and it spins back. I think Davis would say that you know the, the opportunity was there to get a rare chunk play with the passing game. They just Great didn't, time to couldn't call. execute it. Yeah, it's about the execution. Call over to take over. 8.39 to play, up two. Well, guys, a battle hard tonight. They still outgain Michigan, but trail by two. Defense desperate to get the Wolverines off the field, get the football back for their offense. 8.39 to play in what's been a grinder here in Iowa City. Evans takes the handoff and darts for about three if you check back in with Cassidy. City, thank you. Well, number three is hanging on by two points. Drew Peppers in the game. He's in the bunch formation to the left on second and seven. That comes in motion. Handed to him. Peppers. You see the extreme quickness. Scouts believe, Kirk, that he's got NFL ability as a running back or a slot guy. He's going to play defense, obviously, next yeah. year in the next level. But. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he'll be that kind of like that Viper, that nickel spot. Uh, in the NFL, he'll put a little weight on and, and be just a dominant player at that next level. Heard Todd McShay talking about he's probably a top five type of pick if he decides to come out. But, uh, you know, when you watch him go in motion, you don't know if he's going to get the ball or they're using him as a decoy. So even if he doesn't get the ball, he gets attention. It creates 
challenges for a defense's eyes. Big play for this Hawkeye defense on third and fourth spate. Rolls out and delivers his strength there. Drake Harris makes the catch. And uh, going to spot the ball a little near the mark. It'll move to six. First down, yeah. Michigan. Man-to-man -man coverage. Kind of an old-school play. You have three receivers, trips to the left. The inside receiver just works on an arrow route out to the outside. And the two to the outside just kind of take their their man uh, that's got them in coverage and work back over to the middle and freeze up the, middle, the inside man very easily. Just the second catch of the year for Drake Smith, and it's a big one. And now Davion Smith pounds ahead. Rick Harris, I mean, and now Smith pounds ahead. And the Wolverines better running now in this fourth quarter after a, a pretty bleak third quarter. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure Jim Harbaugh did a nice job of challenging them on that last drive. We were backed up inside their own 10-yard line. They're able to get the go-ahead field goal. That Michigan offensive line has looked a little bit different, beginning to assert themselves here late in the game. They're also doing a much better job of getting yards on first down. Absolutely. There's a big hit in the backfield by Anthony Gare, but Smith is able to fight forward wow. yards after contact there. 5'11", 230 pounds out of Warren, Ohio. Gives you an idea of why that physicality from running backs is so important. I mean, he was hit about a, maybe a yard, two yards behind the line of scrimmage, but just kept his legs driving and now gives him a short third down here, less than a yard. Great all individual those, effort there by all those tight ends in the game, Kirk. You need a very short yard. And they're going to feed it inside. That's the fullback, Khalid Hill, the hammering panda, sometimes called the, the touchdown vulture, right? Because most of his carries end up in the end zone. And that's the one play that they typically run with him when you see that, that fullback dive and Spate push him. Watch Spate, a little push there to try to give him more momentum. And then he helps out again. And that push does earn the first down. Because initially, Iowa had that. They shot the gaps there. He stopped there, but keeps moving those legs, and his teammates help him along. Davion Smith helped out. A crucial first down inside the 40 now. Clock at 5.15 to go. McDoom around the edge, looking for a block. Doesn't get one, and is dropped by Desmond King behind the line. That's why you got to love Desmond King. Won the Jim Thorpe Award last year as the top defensive back in all of college football. Had eight interceptions last year. This year has come back. People are not challenging him as much, but I just love that he's physical. He loves to come up and run support. 5'11", about 203 pounds, and loves to get involved. And tonight has been playing with a lot of passion himself. He's fired up to go up against the Wolverines. No doubt. We're up in Detroit. Extra quick pulse tonight against the Wolverines. Spate from the pocket, takes off, spots a little crease and short gain, which will set up third and long. A butt taken away there by Jewell. Iowa that time just well schooled. Phil Parker, the defensive coordinator, doing a great job with this defense. And taking away these routes. We've seen a number of times Spate have to just pull the ball down because of coverage and try to just pick up as many yards as he can. Now let's see if Iowa plays man here and brings pressure or they sit back in zone. Interesting call, Kirk. If they don't get it, will they go for it on fourth down? Spate from the pocket. Delivers into traffic. A battle for the football. It's intercepted. Taken away by Rugamba, the true freshman. He just took the ball away from the receiver, and the Hawkeyes have it back on Michigan's first pick tonight. Well, the, the ball is thrown behind Chesson. Looks like the ball is thrown. He still almost have, comes up with it, but how about the effort by Rugumpa there, the true freshman, fights that football away from Chesson and ends up coming up with a huge interception. Has to step up big tonight, and the young guy has.
Minor the Tuesday, CFP Top 25 Rankings presented by Chick-fil-A will be revealed in a whole lot for that selection community to look at when they gather down in Dallas, Kirk, what's going on today. And Clemson and Washington falling, Michigan in a battle here. Hawkeyes have 343 to work with. They'll try to get in perhaps field goal position. Wadley gets the edge and shows the quicks as he scampers out across the 30. Wilton Spate in that last drive, the play before to the interception was was hit hard in the left shoulder there in that tackle. Yeah, and when he came off on the sideline right away, he, he clearly had some issues. But this ball is thrown behind his intended target, Chesson, and taken away by Rugumba, who, by the way, is having a huge night, inserted into the lineup because of the injury to, to Maven. You can see they're working on Spate over there on the sideline. Second and five. Ronley squirts back out near the 35. It'll be just short of the marker, third and very short. Sam? Yeah, you can see him working on Spade's shoulder. His teammates have come up, and even though he told them he's fine, he was clearly feeling a lot of pain. The problem is Jim Harbaugh directed him to go warm up. There's nowhere to do it. You guys know these sidelines. There's only two feet in between the players' bench and the stands, so there's really nowhere for him to try and throw and get ready for this next drive. Still seems to be in, in some pain there, but uh, in the meantime, Iowa offense trying to trying to move, and there's a, a lineman down, Ike Butker, who's their right tackle being looked at by the athletic trainers. It's been a problem all year to try to get these short yardage situations. They've had better success tonight. Our AT&T inside access takes you inside the famous visitors' locker room here at Kinnick, which is painted pink. Years ago, Hayden Fry did this because it's supposed to make the opponents calm and passive. This, the lockers were still pink, but you saw how they papered over it with the bunch of Michigan stuff. And you know, it's the, the psychological warfare, not a real factor tonight, but uh, interesting nonetheless. And Harbaugh's defense, let's see if they can get a stop here. Iowa, vigorous Kirk, to, to need to move the ball to about the Michigan 35 to give Racinus, their, their long distance kicker, a chance. So they've got to get at about 30 yards at least to feel comfortable about be, a go-ahead field goal. Before they worry about those 30 yards, it's a matter of trying to get this first down, which Good is point. always a challenge against this Michigan front. Well, <laughs> it's like they gave it to him. Yes, barely. Methard's not, not a terribly physical quarterback, and he's been stuffed on some quarterback sneaks this season. Just did enough there. Iowa right now, just under three minutes to go, all three timeouts. They do not have to worry about certain urgency at this point, especially since they don't need a touchdown and just need to get into field goal range. Wadley is the factor here. He's got to be able to be able to run the football, and when Michigan knows he's going to get the ball and still make people miss the way he's done a number of times tonight. He's had 100 yards rushing. He's been the top receiver with four catches. Play clock at one when they snap it and give it to Wiley running left. Behind some blockers. Excellent help there on the edge by the big fellas, and he rips off 10 more. I just love the kid's determination. I mean, he's running into a defense that we've all been marveling at for nine or ten weeks, and he's running right into the teeth of this defense, and he doesn't hesitate. He, he's, he just wants the ball. Give me the ball, and I'm going. You gotta love that and the timing right now with this offensive line and Wadley and the way he's running the execution is outstanding now, up to 153 yards on the ground as a team Again, last week 30 yards against Penn State potentially what a huge two minutes ahead for this Iowa team that has been beaten down and had their heart questioned last week after a loss at Penn State Bethard on first down hit as he throws downfield and it intercepted picked off by Channing Stribling he tried to get the ball to Smith who fell down Taco Charlton pressured him and that, that's the difference in the throw Taco Charlton 33 watch how he gets his pressure right there that affected the distance on the ball from C.J. Beathard because Smith got downfield, but Stribling does all year, does a good job of locating the football, adjusting to it, and then going up and coming up with the interception. His fourth of the season.
by Taco Charleston and and Bethard Kirk in this half now one of five. So let's see if this Iowa defense can give Buckeyes offense one final chance to get the football back. Davion Smith is the back. McDoom comes in motion. He feeds Smith. It's a yard. What will you know Iowa's going to use their timeouts. They're anticipating three runs here from Jim Harbaugh and they've got their three timeouts. You, you got to stop. You got to stop them here on three plays. Use your three timeouts and hope to get the football back. I'll be wondered, you know, this Michigan team, which has been just running roughshod over everybody, undefeated coming in here. How much of that was a function of a truly great team? How much of it was a function of the schedule? They really have been tested here tonight. I think Harbaugh would, would say he probably wasn't overly pleased on either side of the ball, but right now they've got a two-point lead. On the road in the Big Ten in November when you're a highly ranked team, the other team comes off one of their worst performances in years. You just knew Iowa had too much pride to just show up and lay down. They're going to give you a great effort. That's what they've done. If Michigan gets out of here alive, it's one of those games that even though this is a senior-laden team, you grow from. You say, hey, you know, we're, we're not this football team that's just invincible. We have to show up, do everything throughout the week, and be ready to go. And you learn from it, you move on. But they've still got a minute 48 here to close the door. When I talked to Harbaugh this week at Ann Arbor, I said, you know, are you going to learn about your team? When, when will you be tested? Because every team is going to have that moment when you, you have to battle. And he said, I, I actually hope we just continue to dominate. Peppers goes in to play a shotgun quarterback here. An yeah. And Peppers keeps it, tries to cut it back. They've been all over number five tonight. He really has not been able to make a, a big impact. And your guy, Ragamba, the freshman, involved again. Yeah, they do a good job leveraging the football and Ben. Uh, Neiman also involved gets off the block by Jake Butt so Iowa well schooled by Phil Parker their defensive coordinator and this defensive staff anytime five gets back at quarterback and that wildcat look here are the two or three things you're looking for and it's almost as if they're there before Peppers has a chance to do anything look at this right here look at this effort by Neiman getting off this block he actually fights and he actually trips up Peppers. But look at the rest of those black jerseys. You've got four black jerseys there leveraging the very quick and fleet-footed Jabril Peppers. So the first two plays went exactly the way Iowa wanted. They've used their two timeouts. Now, does Jim Harbaugh roll the dice and try to throw? Or does he go with conventional wisdom and run? And Iowa then would try to stop him and use that last timeout. He does throw and get a first down. That would just about do it. They could lead the clock down. Third and eight. Spade is pressured. Loops it. Far sideline. Jump ball incomplete. Broken up once again by Rugamba. Spate took another hard shot to the left side there, yep. and he's favoring that arm. Yeah, Hesse hit him right as he threw the football. It's a risk by Jim Harbaugh. Hesse not even blocked that time by the left side by Ben Braden. The left tackle puts it up. Jim Harbaugh clearly telling him, get it up in the air to give Darbo a chance to adjust to it. Almost comes down with it. A risk. Now Iowa saves a timeout. Allen, a low boot. Desmond King's going to have a chance from the 41. And the Thorpe Award winner battles up near midfield. Here comes a here comes a flag. They wanted a face mask. I think the now uh, finally the flag is thrown. I didn't see it. It was yeah. caught up in traffic along the near sideline. It's a face mask. This is going to really move the ball Third into position. Turn. Personal foul, face mask from the nine on the kicking team. 15 yards from the end of the run. First down. They got Mike McCray in what is a huge call. Mike McCray hustling downfield, trying to make a play, trying to contain King. He just got well, his he, hand across the face yeah. mask. It wasn't much. It wasn't much to earn the personal foul. Well, that, Harbaugh can't believe it. Again, I, I refer to Dave Kataya, who knows this better than I. I Dave, I... I always thought you had to grab onto that face mask. It looked like he just kind of put his, his hand when it crossed it. That's what it looked like. You have to grab, twist, turn, etc. I can't tell if he has his fingers inside, but it looks like what you're saying is correct. Well, that puts the ball right at what our spotter, Mike Block, indicates is the, the outer range of Rasonis, the long-range field goal kicker. Jim Harbaugh jumping in there to call a quick timeout. 
Remember how Bethard has struggled now in the second half. Just one completion and one interception. Can they can they get the running game? Can they get it to more makeable right. field goal range? As we take a, another look at this call. Remember it was a Michigan drive earlier that was prolonged by a roughing the, the center call. And now this kind of a phantom face mask. This grabs the side of it. Well, I, I don't know. I don't see it personally. Yeah, he definitely had his hand up there, but did he grab it? Oh. I don't think so. I think he got the side, looked like the side of the face mask, but I, I didn't see him actually, as Dave said, grab a hold of it. But That's cause, Keith cause Duncan. They, they actually have two field goal options. Duncan, the freshman, is the accurate short-range kicker. They'd have to get inside the 40 to, to get, make him comfortable as he warms up on the bike, and we saw Racinus the long-range field goal kicker earlier. Dave, did you have one final thought on that on that penalty? Just remember that foul is not only grabbing the face mask, it's the face mask or any helmet opening. Okay, so you can't really tell if that it's in the ear hole or anything like that. Okay. You're going to get a healthy dose, you would expect, of Wadley here, Akron Wadley. Especially they've had success getting him on the edge. Bethard retreats. It's a screen. It is Wadley. And he stutter steps down to the 25-yard line. And Iowa is in field goal range right now. A great call on first and 10 by Greg Davis. Greg Davis has been scrutinized heavily here in Iowa City for the way this season has gone for this offense, especially last week against Penn State. He has been on point against this defense tonight with some calls gutsy call there considering how tough it is to throw the ball in first and ten breaking a, a tendency there by getting the ball to Wadley through the air Iowa still with one timeout a minute 16 to work with Wadley escapes in the backfield almost dropped for a loss able to battle for three oh. boy Maurice Hurst shot off the line of scrimmage almost as you said before the handoff almost Got to C.J. Beathard. He was fortunate to get the ball off. We came on the air, Kirk, with a game 31 years ago between number one and number two. Michigan scored the game's only touchdown, but Iowa won at 12-10 on a walk-off field goal by Rob Holtland. We'll be working our way toward a similar storyline tonight, 31 years later. Wadley. Nothing there. Clock moving now at 35 seconds. Will they still keep the timeout? He's going to hold on to that, set up their field goal. They actually, Michigan's going to call the timeout. Interesting. So it'll be third and seven. A drizzly night, much worse weather than we had tonight. Harbaugh brings the team out. Hayden Fry, their team marched down the field. They had Ronnie Harmon on that team and Rob Holton with those giant shoulder pads. He went four or five kicking field goals, including the walk-off. The stands were vibrating as the fans were jumping up and down. Harbaugh, of course, Back here as a coach for the first time. Similar feel to this one, Kirk, and look at this. Wow. If Michigan falls tonight, two, three, and four, in the same day in the regular season, going go back, back to, that, to day. that day. Oklahoma lost, Arkansas lost. Eventually the Sooners would get back and win the national title that Amazing. year. Amazing. Mich Iowa still has that one timeout. What about Michigan spending one on defense there? Interesting. Well, it's a big third down. Maybe they just want to make sure everybody is on the same page for what they think Iowa might come up with here. Got to believe they're going to run the football, preferably to the left here, to try to get it in the center of the field and then use that last timeout. Bethard's in the shotgun. Got Daniels to his right. Quarterback just takes off. C.J. Beathard dives for a first down at the 15. And they are in excellent position now for a game-winning field goal. Well, I was Very just, few design runs for this no, game. It was a, a great job of Beathard coming. He's, he's athletic enough to make that play on a quarterback draw. The Michigan defense opened up there. Now you just work the clock down. Not only do you pick up the first down, he's close to the middle of the field. And now they're just going to line it up for this last second field goal. Barron standing next to the official. You cannot believe we're going to have perhaps a finish like we had here back in 1985 when Harbaugh was the quarterback. Here is Keith Duncan, a freshman.
a walk-on who's been very, very accurate. Doesn't have great distance. That's why we saw Racines come in earlier. Made it earlier from 25. And the guy who was in high school a year ago steps out there with a chance to, to live every kicker's dream. That's what it's all about. This is why you work on those fields away from the team hours and hours and hours to hope for an opportunity like this. Weddington, North Carolina, a long way from Big Ten country. Got to believe Jim Harbaugh may freeze him here with that last time out. Keith Duncan for a walk-off winner from 33 yards. He's moving down. Time out. And he will, as you suggested, give the young fella a little more time to think about it. Don't forget what's at stake here, not only for Iowa trying to have a big moment, but for Michigan, for Penn State. For Ohio State, if you know, you're, if you're, you're happy Penn, in Happy Valley, yeah. this goes through. If you're a Penn State fan, you're cheering like crazy for this field goal to be good and for Iowa to upset Michigan. And if you're an Ohio State fan, you're cheering like crazy for him to miss this field goal and for Michigan to win the game. Remember how good Michigan has been at getting their hands on kicks. UCF, it was a, it's a PAT, is a field goal. We know what they've done against punts. Nothing's been automatic here. Harbaugh can't ice him again. Keith Duncan, true freshman from North Carolina, from 33 yards, and a walk-off winner. Right through, and the Hawkeyes have stunned the Wolverines. Michigan unbeaten no more. Respect between King and Peppers there with the Wolverines challenged on the road for the first time. Don't pass the test. And the Hawkeyes who've been questioned and criticized. Very few of these folks mobbing the team believe this would happen tonight, Kirk. What a not, scene. Not after last Saturday. This is a heck of a moment for Kirk Ferentz and for this Iowa football team. Ferentz is somewhere in that mob with Sam Potter. We'll try to see if she can hear us. Sam, are you there? Well, Coach, you put a true freshman out there to win a game of this magnitude. How would you describe your confidence in him? Yeah, I'm really proud of him. I'm just really proud of our whole team. Uh, you know, a week ago, we weren't feeling so good about this time of night. So the guys really uh, did a great job, hung tough, and just played hard tonight. Coach, you've been doing this for a long time, and you described what it was like last week and wanting to see how your team would respond. So what can you say about the way they responded out here? Just really proud of me. I'm, I'm so happy for them. You know, last week, we just got kicked right in the teeth, and that's, that's not much fun. Been through it, done it, all that stuff, but... Uh, yeah, the guys got off the mat. They did a heck of a job all week. Obviously competed tonight. But what was the locker room like at halftime when obviously you guys had already proven you could hang with these guys? Well, we knew we were in a game, and they knew, I think they knew they were in a game. But uh, we also knew there's a lot of football left to be played. It was a heck of a second half. Coach, we appreciate your time. Congratulations. Yeah, there was no real defiance. Who knows what he said to his team, but after that embarrassment and happy.